Hi, everybody. Welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared, and today I'm talking to Jen Stevens. Uh, you may or may not recall, if you've seen my Book of Mormon tracker spreadsheet that I put together, she had contacted me because her sister-in-law came up with like a poem uh, to share the Book of Mormon. It was like a Christmas poem. So it's not really good anymore until next year. If we're still here next year, then we can reuse that poem. But uh, she was the one that got me in contact with her and um, got, got me the poem. And then she has decided to start up a blog. And so that's why I'm talking to her today. Uh, before we get to that, just really quick, I wanted to show you guys, let me do a screen share. Um, in case you're new to the channel, uh, we're doing this thing together as a channel where we're sharing the Book of Mormon. Um, kind of came out of nowhere. And so far, we are at, sorry, I thought it was going to, we're at 3,982 um, copies of the Book of Mormon that have been shared. So I would encourage everybody to do this. And then furthermore, to let me know, just put it in the comments or send me an email. Those are the two best ways. And then we'll just keep going. And I'm hoping that, I think it's very re realistic to where we could hit 5,000, but I'd like to ideally like really get to like 10,000. I think that we can do that. So far, only uh, 308 people have let me know that they're sharing. There's other people that have let me know that they're like, they just don't want to put their names on the tracker. And that's fine. That's fine. I'm doing the tracker because it could encourage other people to share the Book of Mormon. But that's where we're at. So keep it up, everybody. The channel goal right now is 10 per person. If we did that, uh, that would be 13,700 copies of the Book of Mormon that would be shared. Um, no, 100. So, sorry, no, 100, 137, right? Because my, yeah, that would be if only one person or one share per person. So share the Book of Mormon and then let me know. So, Jen Stevens, you are from Washington, correct? Yes. Yes. And whereabouts? So I live in the Silicon area. So I live in a really gorgeous area. Um, it's, we have, um, we live on an acre. So we have a little bit of land and we have um, the woods behind us. And then we're just a short walk from the ocean. So we live there along the coast. I can walk down. There's a little ferry in that area. Um, and there's some lakes that are close by. So I actually grew up in the Chicago area. And so having moved to Washington, it's so beautiful. And I just, I love all the natural beauty around me. So. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Chicago, like like the Chicago, the Chicago land. Chicago land area. Yeah. yeah Southern suburbs. Cool. <laughs> um, and how long have you been a member of the church? So my whole life, my whole, whole life. life. I've, yeah, I've been a member of my church of the church forever. And, you know, my parents were members. And in fact, I have um, tons of church blood. It's like you go back and um, just tons of you know, uh, people that have been in the church since forever. Um, I'm a, a descendant of the Knight family and, um, I'm a third cousin of president Nelson. And you look oh, wow. at all of my ancestors and they're like very staunch committed. Um, so that's, that's strong with me. Very good. And now I'm very, uh, geographically minded. I, I don't know why I don't ask my other guests this, but like, <laughs> if you don't mind sharing, like where, where did you, um, like get your endowments, what, what temple did you get sealed in so on and so forth? Yeah. So having grown up in the Chicago land area, I was so excited when they built the Navajo temple, um, because I knew immediately that's going to be my temple. And that was, it was amazing. I mean, to go and have a wedding in the Navajo temple was just a really special experience because I have so much ancestry there and very much into family history. Um, a lot of my life inspiration comes from my ancestors and family history and kind of just the founding of the church and the restoration. And so to be able to get married there was such just a really ama amazing experience. And, um, you know, the day that we got married, we were the only marriage of the entire day. So it was like almost everyone in Nauvoo was just centered around this one wedding. There just happened to be a general authority there that day. Um, and that was really cool to have him there. And he was there for a ceiling. And then when we walked out, they had, um, the band like on the little trolley there and they played the wedding march i mean it was just beautiful wow it was a dream yeah it was really cool <laughs> yeah i i would have liked to have gotten uh married and sealed there too on my dad's side 
that's where I have my uh, pioneer heritage and yeah. the number of lines that uh, go back to Nauvoo and, and stuff like that. So that's really, that's really special that you were able to do that. It really was. It really was. So yeah. And then what, what got you in uh, Washington? Why are you there? So now? my husband, my husband grew up in this area and, um, you know, it came time to just kind of decide where, where do we want to live? You know, my family's in Chicago, his family's here. Um, but I knew my family wasn't really firmly rooted in Chicago because all of their family was from Utah and um, some in California. And so I knew that they had kind of come out to Chicago. They might not stay there forever. Um, and when it came down to it, my husband, he graduated um, in dental school. So he had a practice. His dad's partner was selling a practice and it was a really great opportunity. So we ended up um, having to kind of make that decision. Just It just felt like the right thing to do. And we kind of um, went from there. So I'm actually a dental hygienist. He's a dentist. So oh. <laughs> we're, yeah, <That's> great. <laughs> we're, good. we're a little dental team. We had to kind of plan where we went to school and where we wanted to set up. Because as a dentist, once you set up shop, you're kind of there forever. I mean, unless you really want to you know, start from the ground up. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, okay. So the, the first time that you and I ever had contact, it was because of the book of Mormon challenge. And then later yes. you decided to do your blog. What, what, what inspired you to do it? And if you don't mind, uh, go ahead and share it on the screen and, and kind of. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'd love to. Out. Um, I feel like, actually, I feel like it all started with this last general conference with president Nelson. And, um, I actually feel like, your channel has been like a huge help. It was really inspiring to me to just help me. I, you know, when I first listened to it, I knew it was good, but sometimes you have to really go back and think about it. And sometimes it takes someone else saying something in a certain light that makes the light bulb really go off so that you feel really excited. Like, wow, no, that was, that was amazing how he called upon us to be the people of the second coming. Cause I, I heard yeah. that, but you think, yeah, yeah. You know, we're always trying to be ready for Christ again. Right. You know, um, and so certain things that you said got me really excited about that. And so we immediately, um, you know, went to the temple. He talked about focusing on the temple and, um, and, and so we did that. Actually, temple? Well, the Seattle temple. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we went to the Seattle temple and, um, I feel like ever since that time that just like things have been happening, miracles flowing, just tons of like miracles and inspiration and just a lot of direction as far as what I need to do. Um, I think driving this force is just within my heart. Um, like I just have a huge push to, I think I've been giving so many blessings and, um, kind of like me five old, right. You talked about, I've been favored. I had good parents. I've had good families to teach me and to show me the jewels, the priceless jewels of the gospel. And so I feel this kind of this weight of, I have a responsibility to share that with people because I'm going to feel really bad at the end of my life if I just kept all this good stuff for myself and I didn't try to share that. So I've been really just taking it to the Lord. How can I share what's in my heart? How can I share all the goodness of the gospel? Um, and it, it really, it's like the Lord, when I saw your, um, you know, kind of flooding the earth with the book of Mormon and the tracker that just, that was, that really hit me. And it um, was just interesting because, um, I mean, before that I had had, um, just this dream. And it was about the first thing I had was just a dream about sharing, um, this thought that I had had about the city of Enoch and also, um, the rainbow and what the rainbow means and how it relates to our covenants. And, um, anyways, in the dream was actually about, I was supposed to share it with my family. And, um, and I thought, well, that's kind of weird, but I'll just do it. Um, and, and then the next day I saw your um, post about, you know, flooding the Book of Mormon. And I thought, oh my gosh, this just ties into the whole, you know, flooding the earth with righteousness. And I had all these quotes that line up perfectly. And so everything that you had said, I knew that the information that I had, that you'd get it. Like I'd send it to you and you'd be like, oh, wow, this totally connects with like the inspiration that you had um, and kind of building upon that, like this is the end goal, right? Like we're flooding the Book of Mormon so that we flood the earth with righteousness so that the city of Enoch can, you know, come down and then Christ can come. And, and I guess one of my things that um, I feel really passionate about is kind of uh, beginning with the end in mind, right? So all these like wonderful promises and glories, you know, when it comes to the second coming, it's a really exciting time. I've always felt like I'm going to see these times. Like I just have, I've known that for maybe the past eight years, I've just felt like 
just had various promptings and things um, that were going to happen. And, and also I just felt like, you know what, it's so important for people to focus on the good things because that is what gets us through the hard things. Right. And that's true with everything in life. So. So you said like eight years ago. So basically before 2020, because there a lot oh, of people yeah. kind of like woke up with 2020. Yes. Um, yeah. But for, for you, you were feeling it. Yeah. Uh, before really then. early, really early to the point where at that point it was like taboo to talk about this. Like, I mean, if you talk about like things like anything bad happening or that like it's getting close to the second coming, it was like, you're a real weirdo. You know, like people yeah. didn't want to hear it at all. I think things have changed, you know. 2020, we saw what kind of crazy things can happen. And I think it's kind of a taste of just how quickly things can change in the world. And we know that before Christ comes, there are going to be big changes, right? Um, and so I, I just told my close family about it. I've actually always, the thing that I've always told my close friends and family are that, so eight years ago, I just said, things are going to happen. Something big is going to happen in 2020. And then in 2024, 2025, that time frame. Um, I've, I've just always felt like those are the two just, and that's just my own personal inspiration. So, I, and so I've always been watching very closely prophets, the apostles, things that are happening in the world, looking for, um, you know, actual evidences to support that ever since. And they just keep coming. And I feel like, wow, things are actually, now I feel very like confirmed, like this is actually exactly shaping out. Like I was so excited when um, the prophet talked about 2020 being a hinge point. Um, because what I was saying years before that was that um, 2020 is going to be a hinge point in the sense that things will get really, it's going to be like opening the Bible. Like we're opening the scriptures to our times. There are going to be polarized things happening, trials, things that are difficult, but also blessings. And I think that, um, as things, you know, heat up in the world and things are getting harder and harder at the same time, the Lord is going to pour out more and more blessings upon you know, his covenant people, those who are turning to Christ and those who are having faith and that, that 2020 would be the beginning of that, where that things, you know, just, you just imagine like opening the book of the scriptures and all those wonderful things. I mean, because we know that, you know, the prophets since the beginning of time have wanted to live in our days. And, you know, why was that? You know, we always hear, we read about all of the, you know, definitely there are sobering things that are in the scriptures. Um, but also really, really wonderful things. So it's kind of, so it's kind of like being on this today. So when you invited me to come on your channel, it was, it was great. And it was terrible because I thought, oh my gosh, I get to, like, who gets to actually be on their favorite YouTube channel? That, I mean, that was a miracle in and of itself. I was really excited. Like, that's, that's great. That's amazing. But um, I'm not an online person. So me starting this blog was actually just completely following the spirit. Like, just me being like, okay, if I have to, I'll be obedient. Like I want to share. Um, but I've never posted a YouTube video in my life. I'm the type of person that doesn't comment. I don't like participate on the internet and I do very little of it. Like I have a Facebook, I have a little bit of Instagram, but they're mostly dead. Um, and I don't go on it a lot. So it really was like when I got the inspiration to start a blog, I thought I have no idea how to do this. Um, if I'm going to do it, like I want it to be nice and I need to have some direction. I have no clue how to do this. Um, and so I feel like the Lord has just, because I was willing to just take the first step and say, I'll do it, but you have to help me, you know? And I feel like the Lord has really um, poured out his blessings. And so here we are today is actually exactly one month from my first post. So um, for me, like dates and timing and like having things in sync, that's kind of like a special thing that I have with the Lord that he confirms and witnesses to me that I'm on the right path and to like, keep going. So. Yeah. It's so great. Like, it's really good that you're doing it. I had some thoughts earlier when you're, when we were talking about like sharing, because like, if we could like see all the numbers, you know, everyone knows mm -hmm. I'm a big number person. Yeah. Like I yeah. don't want to like after this life, have the Lord talk to the church and be like, look, if everyone had been uh, sharing as the as most uh, as much as they could, right? Uh, we actually could have had you know this number of baptisms, but yeah, this number of people uh, didn't have that chance in life. They got it in the spirit world, but I really would have preferred that they had it in life. And you know, you guys dropped the ball. Like a lot of you yeah. did really yeah. good. Some of you could have done better. And so yeah. I, I just personally, I don't want to like have any of that. You know, yeah. so. Yeah, I've always, I've always looked for opportunities and like now doing this uh, Book of Mormon challenge on the on the channel, 
probably the most amazing thing that's happened in my life. And I hope yeah. that we all yeah. keep doing it. And then with you um, doing your blog and, uh, you know, you never know, maybe, maybe you'll do a YouTube channel at some point. Like yeah. Yeah. you have a good presence. I, you speak really good. I think that you could do well, but like, well, thank uh, you. With- I, I have to say that is one thing that, like I told you, like just starting a blog and coming on here one time is pretty terrifying for me. So great and terrible, right? There's a terrible, cause I'm just a shy person. I get nervous about it. And so I think, I don't think I could live my life feeling nervous all the time about coming on YouTube and, and just the worry of like, Oh, people, nobody's watching it you know, or whatever. And yeah. so, um, but I appreciate your encouragement because it was actually your encouragement on that, that gave me enough encouragement to pray about just, you know, to, to open the door a tiny bit to think, well, maybe I would, if the Lord really wanted me to, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, earlier you said like who gets to be on their favorite YouTubers channel. And I was thinking who gets to be a YouTuber that people have you as your favorite channel? <laughs> like, because <laughs> I wasn't planning on doing this. It literally, I've said, I've told this story a couple of times on the channel where um, it was, it was literally just one day in August of 2021. I, I was thinking about the next year, 2022, and my goals for graphic design. I had a certain number of designs I wanted to do and goals I wanted to meet. And just one day, uh, it just hit me to do a YouTube channel. So I, I just took my phone, went out to the chicken coop and just kind of like talked and, and it just like, it, it like progressed and it progressed. And now it's like at this point where I'm at like 13,700, it's like, yeah, what? Wow. <laughs> what the heck is going on right now? You know? Yeah, that's amazing. So the Lord, um, he knows what you're capable of and he'll qualify you, but, but yeah, mm-hmm. it's important taking those very first steps and then just yeah. like, you know, starting out small and then, right, um, right. I don't know. And then you can like turn those things into strengths because I, I never thought that the thing is, I never thought that I'd be good at doing a YouTube channel. Like I'm not a very like right. outgoing person. Right. So I thought that like, that was something that would never happen in my life, but here we yeah. are. So, yeah, um, <laughs> so weird. Uh, you just uh, never know. Yeah. Yeah. It, so let's take a look at your, um, blog and can you explain, yeah. you know, where the name came from? I like, I read sure. it, but like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me go to it. I'll just kind of, um, go to it and kind of, kind of show it and I won't read all of it, but I'll just kind of talk a little bit about it. So, okay. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So it's my blog and we'll go to the kind of about me. I kind of explain how I got to, um, how I started it. Um, but first of all, I want to just note here, I know people, members of the church are thinking, oh, that's not a modest person. That was the only picture of a woman. <laughs> I wanted to have a woman and fire poppies in there. And that was the only picture. So you have to, you have to imagine it as a symbol, right? Israel mm-hmm. often is, is seen as, you know, we have Rahab and we have, <laughs> we're, we're sinners at times. We're still working on getting those glorious robes. So, um, all right. So I just kind of have my beginning stuff here and I kind of just, um, you know, introduce it by saying that, um, I basically just prayed about it and, and the thoughts that came to my mind were fire poppy bloom, despite the doom and gloom. And, um, you know, that just came into my mind and I, and what I was praying about was, um, you know, I'd felt prompted, like I should start do something online. And I thought I have no idea where to start. So I need a starting point. And that was my starting point. And then from there, I said, okay, well, I have no idea how to start a blog. Like, I don't, I don't know how to do that. I mean, I had a blog a long, long time ago, the whole blog spot thing, um, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do an actual website. And so um, anyways, it just kind of came together. And I thought, well, if there's, you know, firepoppy dot, you know, org, then I'll go ahead with that. And sure enough, that was available. So I got that set up and I just feel like every step along the way, things just kind of open up. And how'd you decide on fire poppy? That was, um, that just, it just kind of came to me. It it was just like, those were, that was the inspiration. It was like, that was the word that I heard was fire poppy. And it was like, the words just came to my mind, fire poppy bloom, despite the doom and gloom. And I was like, fire poppy, what does that mean? And so I'm like going online, I'm looking like fire poppy. What is that? I mean, I understood that bloom, despite the doom and gloom, I understood that. Um, because for someone who's focused on the second coming, I feel like 
I guess over the past eight years, it's kind of a struggle. There's a balancing act of like not getting into the fearful part of it um, and looking at the good. And there's just this, but also soberly facing the reality of it. So I think there really is a balance to be had with that. Um, and so I really liked, I was like, wow, that just, that has a ring to it. And um, it made sense. So I looked up what fire poppies were and then I was able to just basically, yeah, kind of go from there. That gave me more inspiration and it made sense to like my own personal thoughts, right? Um, and then as I was, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about fire and fire poppy, I'm like, oh yeah, because you know, the day of burning and the last days. And, and then I'm looking at fire and I, I noticed that, um, you know, the Mauna Loa eruption that that had happened. And I realized that that was um, on the same day, like that I was getting surgery. And so that's, this is where like, I had just gotten surgery. So I was having time where, cause I'm, I'm a busy mom of five. I'm the women's president. I'm just, I'm very busy. I'm doing things. So um, it was like, I was forced to just have this quiet time. And, um, and I, and because I was recovering, I had the time within just a few days to start this up. I remember when I told my mom, um, I started a website. She said, what? Like, why didn't you tell me about this? And I was like, well, I thought of it like two days ago. And then I just, <laughs> it just happened like that. Um, and so I wanted people to have something good online. So when you're, when people like as the times and the hard things heat up, that people can come online and see something that is uplifting and good and just pointing people's minds to the good things that are coming, right? Pushing past the hard things. Cause I think that there are gonna, there's gonna be a greater need for that as time goes on. Um, and just, let's see, let's go back to the home. So my blog, I'll click on my blog really fast. I've only done one post on my blog. What I actually have in mind that I think I wanna do in the future is actually, at first I was thinking it was gonna be a blog just about you know, our family life. I might do some of that, but I actually think I wanna do temporal preparedness stuff. Like I have a lot of ideas about ways to just be prepared and things that you can do. Um, and so I think over time, I want to do some of that as well. Since you guys have an acre, I mean, I guess you don't need an acre to do this, but do you, do you have like a, you have like a garden or anything like that? Yes. Yeah, so we have a garden. So that's, those are some of the things that I want to post about is my journey with gardening. We actually have an orchard and we planted oh, a bunch of fruit trees. We planted a bunch of raspberry bushes and blueberry bushes. The goal is I want to plant just, um, I mean, a big food forest. That would be the ideal goal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just have all kinds of like orchards and berries and um, I want to learn to grow, you know, a lot of different things. And we had the woods back there, um, you know, in a short walk down too. So it's a really beautiful place. Um, but yeah, so this is one of the reasons why um, I wanted to move here was just to have that land and have that experience. So I really love the the idea of the homesteading and all that. I would love to get chickens this spring, oh, you know, you maybe should. some rabbits. So yeah. that's something that I haven't explored. So I'll be looking to other people who are sharing online to help me with that, right? So. Um, so it's a big deal, you know, you can really help people. In fact, um, it's just so interesting as I've been doing this, I feel like, um, the Lord has really opened my eyes to how other people online can help us. I mean, we just do it when we get out of our comfort zone to do it, like he'll jump in and help us and how this helps other people. And in fact, there's this really interesting, just another little miracle this morning before I got on. So I had my computer set up with all, you know, my tabs ready to go. And this morning, as I'm checking it to make sure everything is you know, good to go before we sign on, um, I had something open on my Facebook page, but it had changed. So it was really weird. Um, it was on a completely different, it's like, here, I'll click on it. Let me find it. You know, I like the fire poppy uh, visual because I'm still thinking about that. Like, <clears throat> just the the idea of fire and red, it's just like very artistic. And I, I love the smell of fire and we smell all yes, the time around here because some people have um you know fire stoves and stuff like that and there's always like fields burning people like getting yes. ready for the next year yeah yeah so I love that just, as a yeah. kid I was a pyro like I just I love fires too I love building fires um I love going to girls camp and teaching the girls like all the different ways that you can start a fire there's so many ways um and so that I'm sure I'll do some posts about that on my blog um, and so same thing here. It's like kind of the fire. I love that aspect. I kind of like the, you know, that, but I also like to look at the beauty and, um, it just, 
this whole, you know, you posted your last thing about um, these arc storms and, and that's exactly what fire poppy is about. It's about, um, you know, fires come, they burn these huge areas um, and the fire poppies have to grow lots of them. And so I imagine that as all of us doing our best to bring light and beauty, despite, you know, the fires and all the things that are happening, we need to bring that light and beauty so that we can stop the erosion. And that is the beauty of the fire poppies is they all spring up and they only spring up when that fire comes but when they all you know if there's enough of them then it stops the erosion and then when the rains do come it's not as devastating you don't have those huge landslides it helps to fight that um so there's not as much devastation that comes from those things so uh, it was kind of mm -hmm. cool that your last video about that i was like oh that's the fire puppy image i like that <laughs> yeah i guess you could say it's a very um kind of like <clears throat> millennial type symbol you know because it's yeah. after the fire and then thriving and having beauty afterwards and yes, recovering yes. healing uh, yes stuff like that that must be why yes. you were born with red hair it all it's all making sense <laughs> <laughs> um so i was gonna show you this just popped up so it was weird when i opened my screen today normally what i had done is i was searching my post and to find this old post i just typed in you know search my post about COVID. And you can see like, you know, there's some things that come up. Um, but when I opened it this morning, it had changed. And as I couldn't scroll up, there was only one post on the screen, which was really weird because I knew that I had quite a few posts that had popped up and I had it already saved on this. Um, but this one was here and it was the only one. But then as, um, and I was, you know, thinking about it, I'm like, hmm, maybe that's something I'm supposed to share. And then as I wait a little bit longer, it it like kind of resets and it all comes back and it's all there. But um, I just felt like, wow, this is actually just another example of how something online, how sharing online can help. And this is an example. This is one of my friends who posted on Worldwide Unified. So you think like, oh, you know, for, I know there's a lot of people that think, oh, what are, you know, what good are these online things? And it can, sharing online really help people. Um, and here is my friend, she just said, you know, she's saying, thank you. I joined this group, the opportunity to pray fast and celebrate with y'all. She and her family, you know, always welcome us to join them at, you know, so she's saying, thank you. But then she's saying, basically on Monday, I went into work with a renewed sense of calm. So she had been feeling, this is the time of COVID where she's, you know, we're all feeling that anxiety. Um, and she mentions how, you know, her mother called her that night. She's very, very Polish Catholic. She told me of the prayers that she had been offering for me and that Sunday had been Divine Mercy Sunday, 20 years ago, Sunday, I was in for the canonization of St. Faustina. Um, and that is what like St. Faustina reminded us of, that Jesus came to earth, no matter what your theology, to bring love and mercy. I do not think that day was an accident. Jesus showed his mercy that day to me, and I felt calm so I could help others. Um, and then she says, I think those out there praying for us healthcare providers. And um, yeah, this worldwide unified, this is something that was just, you know, members of the church started as an official church thing, but it was just kind of like the flood the book of mormon thing where um you know members of the church they just put it out there and it has a purpose to get people together and to grow their faith and um so it, that was just a reminder to me that yeah these things that we do online especially these group efforts um are very helpful and so um i think that like the flooding the earth i was able to start the flood the earth with the book of mormon and so if people want to come on here, they can always post, and then I can post it um, on yours. And I'm just going to be posting ideas on how we can do that. Um, because I just, I mean, my big testimony is you may think, um, you know, what good is that if I just share with one person or, um, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, or maybe you feel like just, you know, sending a text to someone, that's not going to be a big deal. They, weren't, they won't read it. They won't care. Um, that when you just do the effort to go out and share, like those miracles will just flow. And I've definitely experienced that. So even just from the standpoint, I mean, you think of the prophets of Noah who was proclaiming to the world and had zero success, right? But he still felt those blessings. So there's always that. Yeah. Well, I guess you could say it's it's potentially one of those um, Abinadi moments where, and Sister Nelson brought that up, being prepared for Abrahamic tests and Abinadi moments where you feel like you're the only one, you mm -hmm. know, that has a testimony around you, uh, only member of the church at your work or whatever. But um, you never, you never know how the Lord <clears throat> may have prepared somebody because like we can't see into other people's lives and what they're experiencing 
um, behind the scenes. And so for all you know, when you send that text, it maybe the Lord set it up in such a way that it comes at just the right time for that right. person. And then the other thing is, and I've talked about this many times on the channel, um, and it's interesting as I put together this uh, timeline, because I'm including like technological advances, and everyone knows that technology really started to advance since the time of Joseph Smith until now, yeah. to where now we're like all connected, like all countries are connected with the internet and right. uh, in other means, but it's like having been part of a war where all you had was swords and now we've been given uh you know machine guns and right, airplanes right, and stuff like that right right you don't, you don't no no to... it's so true yeah. and i actually i feel like really the seed that started um everything was i did have it in my heart and i was reading the scriptures and i was reading about um you know the, the sons of mosiah and and ammon and, and the great missionaries and i was thinking that's what i want to do that's what i want to do um, and I felt like the Lord was like, well, go online. If you want to, <laughs> I count thousands of people want to get your word out, go online. So, yeah, um, I look at my, uh, analytics and I see like the different countries, like the, my audience from different countries. And I'd like to know the story behind some of them, uh, because some of them are just far away places. I don't know if it's like somebody that's visiting some country like Indonesia and they're just like on vacation and they're watching my channel or if it's actual Indonesians that are watching my channel, but the, the, uh, the potential reach is crazy. It, wow. it is just wow. crazy. You never know who's wow. going to come across your stuff. When I was doing videos about, uh, the Pashtuns in Afghanistan, because they have a tradition of, um, they believe that they, they're descended from Israel, even though they're Muslim, yeah. they still hold that tradition. There are a bunch of past tunes that came across my videos. And for all I know, maybe that one of them took a, an, an interest in the church. So um, Heavenly Father has given us incredible tools and we should really, really think about using them seriously because they're, they're just there for us to use, but we got to pick them up and use them. All right. So let's see some more of your blog. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, this post right here, you know, it's so interesting because this post right here, again, this could almost contain within it, this, this analogy of how the last days are and how the mixed feelings, really hard, terrible, tragic things happening, but interspersed with God's miracles. And if we are keeping our covenants, um, going to the temple, if we're, um, turning to Jesus Christ. If we have Jesus Christ in our hearts and we have him with us and we're doing that all the time, then we're going to be prepared. When those times come, um, we're going to see miracles. And because of that, God is going to bless us to um, be able to help people in special ways. And I think, and to see and to experience it in a special way. And um, so yesterday, let me click on this. This just happened yesterday. So this experience literally happened yesterday. And I knew that I needed to quickly you know, write about it and so that I can include this here and to just share like this amazing miracle. Um, I, I found like, it's actually, um, pretty interesting how, you know, on your last two shares, you had, um, you know, a night descendant and she was talking about miracles. And I feel like that's my thing. And, and I, you know, clicked on her and I've listened to some of her stuff and I, I feel kind of a kinship there. Um, and so I wanted to, that's kind of what I'm doing too, is just sharing all these miracles that are flowing from the gospel. And, um, so I was driving on the road. I was going to pick up my son from preschool, very common activity. And as I'm driving there on the side of the road, um, I see this memorial site and I see all these flowers and all these things. And I see some teenagers standing there crying and, um, it, it was really terrible. So I had heard it mentioned briefly on Sunday at ward council that there was a teenager who had gotten into a car accident and had passed away. Um, and that was, um, it was this young man, Reese Woodman, and he, um, sounds like he was just an amazing man. Like everybody loved him. His dad is the coach of the baseball team at the high school and just really a beloved person. And, um, I didn't know this at the time. I just heard, Oh, someone at Silicon got into a car accident. That's all I knew. Um, and so I was wanting to find out more, but as I drove down the road, it, it dawned on me, Oh my gosh, this is the spot. Like this is, this is where it was. And it really, um, it really hurt my heart. Um, like now as I think about it, cause I'm the young woman's president 
and the youth are my heart. Like I pour my heart into the youth and I love them. And so to think, and I knew this was going to affect all of them, that all the youth at the at our local community high school were going to be so devastated by this. And so, um, so just it's like I'm putting myself back in that moment. I'm driving. It's just like this. I'm tearing up and I'm feeling um, the tragedy that we're all going to experience, and especially the family. Um, and as I'm thinking that, it's this really dark day, right? It's really it's cloudy here a lot. Um, it's just dark. But then all of a sudden, as I'm driving, and I'm in this, this tunnel of trees, there's all these trees, there's all these clouds, I'm like surrounded in darkness. And all of a sudden, this like bright light ray of sunlight just comes through onto my, onto my face. And it was so sudden, it was shocking. I'm like, oh my gosh, the sun, I haven't seen that in ages. <laughs> and how did the sun get through all those clouds and get through all those trees to like, you know, kind of wake me up to that. And I thought, um, it reminded me of a few other moments, like special moments in my life where I was um, really needing help or down and the same thing happened. It's like the sun kind of just rose to the right place and it was just like a tender mercy for God and it kind of got my attention. Um, and so I'm really, I'm really paying attention now. I'm like, oh, wow, this is, I think God's trying to, you know, do something here. So I'm driving and I just drive a couple of minutes. So my, my ride to preschool is, is very short. So as I just drive a few more minutes and then I see like this beautiful opening like I see it appear I see the clouds open and the rays of sunshine are coming down and it's so gorgeous I feel like oh my gosh like Christ is going to come out of those clouds like it was so beautiful and it was so pretty that I pulled over and I took a picture I'm like okay God's doing something I have to document this so so I take a picture and then I think okay well I you know we keep driving and um we keep going and then it closes back up so it was there for just like a few minutes it closes back up and I'm just driving on the straight long road. So I'm watching the same sky, right? Um, and then when I get to the stoplight, you can see it's dark and then it starts raining. It starts pouring. And um, and then I'm almost to preschool to drop them off. So I get there and I drop them off. And as I'm thinking about that, you know, the sun and, and this like second coming imagery, I think to myself, how amazing would it be if as I'm driving back, if a rainbow appeared right over that spot where his memorial was like, that would just totally confirm it in my books that this was this message from God of love, um, not just to me, but perhaps something that I could share with the family. Um, and so I'm driving and I'm watching this guy and I'm thinking, I don't see a rainbow. <laughs> you know, I can see this guy. I'm watching it and I'm just driving. It's all it's all open. And I know that it's open for a while until you get to the, you know, the tunnel of trees. And that's where this memorial is. So I think the rainbow has to appear before the tunnel of trees that I can see it. It's got to be on this side of the road. And I'm watching and thinking, okay, like, is it going to happen? And it's almost like too late. And I think, well, you know, wishful thinking, but then all of a sudden, like it just materializes this beautiful rainbow. Oh so I pull over and I, I take a picture of it and I just, I'm just staring at it and on it's beautiful. It's so amazing. And I, I just stare at it for really only a few minutes and then I get my picture and then it disappears and it's gone. So I keep going. So I continue and I, and I'm in awe because, you know, as I was driving, um, the rainbow means so much to me. And if you read my blog, you can read, I would say just a fraction of what the rainbow means. I think it means a whole lot. And, um, and so for me, it just, it's more than just like, oh, that's a pretty rainbow. It's like a thousand different points of doctrine and my covenants and my relationship to God and the second coming and God's mercy and just like a million things. And, you know, if you go on my blog, I get kind of wordy, but I just have so many things like I feel like for the past eight years, I just, what I do in my life is I observe, I'm an observer, I'm a ponderer. Um, I try to seek for a revelation every day and I just write thing, write these things down. And, um, and so sometimes it's hard to express it. Um, but this was just so beautiful. And so I get back in my car and, um, and it's funny because after I did, after I looked at later, like literally as I'm like posting this blog, I realized how similar this picture looks to this picture. Look, it's like, I'm driving on this road and there's this rainbow. And this is just like my picture of the rainbow covenant path. So I thought that yeah. was pretty cool. And then, um, anyways, and then I keep going. And so I'm just thinking about, again, this is another miracle that's just kind of you know, confirming this reminds me of my ARC post. We're going to go to that because um, what my ARC post is about is that's kind of my word for the year. And it's about um, looking for miracles, seeking for miracles and putting them inside that ARC inside of your heart, right? So inside of the ARC, there was Aaron's wedding rod, the 10 commandments, the pot of manna. So 
I think before Christ comes, we need to seek for those miracles. And I feel like this is the year. I feel like that's the prophet saying, he's saying, seek for miracles, go to the temple because this year you need to find those miracles. You need to experience them and you need to put them in your heart and store them so that when those hard times come, you will, you will reference that. And just like the children of Israel, they carried that ark with them. If they didn't have that ark with them, that firm foundation, those like things that they had, um, then they couldn't win. They fell. It was too much. Um, so when we need to fight our battles, we need to keep that ark with us inside our heart and know that God is with us. And um, anyway, so I stopped at the memorial site and I thought, well, obviously I have to share this story. So I'm going to put it on my website. I'm going to try to share it. Hopefully friends and family will see it and it will bring them um, some comfort. I actually raced home. I got some like homemade cookies that I had and I brought them to the kids that were standing there and I told them the story and just, um, it was just, they, I, they seemed to really appreciate it. And um, and it was just such the, it, the amazing part too, was just how the spirit was like pouring out on me and I could just feel God's love for everyone that God loved this young man and that he loves all of us in that same way. He loves all of us so much. And then after I, you know, was done talking to those, those morning youth who were standing there devastated at why this had happened to their friend and, you know, all those questions that come with it, like, where was God and why did this happen? Um, like I look and the song comes on and it's pour your spirit out. And I thought, oh my gosh, it couldn't be just a more perfect song. And just a small sampling of the words are just like Lazarus out of that grave. Our God rewrites history. Jesus, you change everything when you pour your spirit out. Um, and just that thought that that spirit that we have is so important and it really does change everything. We have that with us then um, in all situations. And I just kind of mentioned how he kind of joined the ranks. There were, um, you, know, you have the queen of Elizabeth who, when she passed away and all the people were there mourning, you had this kind of symbol in the sky, the double rainbow. I actually have a friend who she did life flight. She was a nurse and she took care of people. And when they did an honorary flyover with a helicopter, um, a rainbow appeared in the sky. So this is actually, I was like third instance of kind of a rainbow appearing um, in those hard moments. Um, you know, and this as just I goes was... back to it. And it's like my first two posts, they're all about miracles. What about the ark? And then you have flood of the earth, right? And so this is where, like, Jared, I don't know, you and I, like, I think three different times, like, I have like this, like, information, like a dream, this, like, very direct revelation. And then the next day, I see that you're posting about it. And it's just, <laughs> it's just, and then I get like this new piece to the puzzle. And like, um, you know, we were talking about that. And then, the next day you had posted about, you know, what Bruce R. McConkey has said about like the rainbows and the seasons. And um, anyways, it's just wild because it's like, I'm already starting my posts like about these topics and then you're posting and it's giving me extra information. And so that's why I think God's trying to show me like, this is the power of online because, you know, if we're building Zion and we're trying to um, do this together, like we need to unify and we need to help each other. So whatever it is that we're doing, find somebody that's like-minded, that's interested in what you're doing and help each other out. And like, you can build off of each other and, yeah. and also like get excitement because um, maybe other people that you're around aren't excited about the same things that you are or don't see things the same way. So find people that are kind of trying to do what you're trying to do and have your, you know, and try to like um, get that, keep that spiritual momentum going. So, yeah, because, you know, None of us can do everything by ourselves. You know, right, there's nothing right. in this world, even not, not even just the church, but like, um, you know, none of us like have the know-how, for example, to build a house all by ourselves. None of us could like put right. in right. Uh, the electric and the right. HVAC and the everything like, yeah, it, yeah. things are specialized. Knowledge is kind of dispersed and like we all have to work yes. together to make things yes. happen. And that includes in the gospel. Yes. Yeah. And I have to tell you, nobody knows that principle more than me because during 2020, so right before 2020 hit, we started building a house. So we were doing um, just all of the land and the utilities. It was such a big job. And every day I was so grateful for the people that had the skills to help us do that. And it was such an interesting time too, because at this point, you have the Provident Apostles who are talking about like building your foundations and, and, you know, re, and we have the Salt Lake Temple and it's all about kind of like going back, looking at your foundations. And it was really cool because we were laying the foundations of our new house and it was like this real life experience. And, and I feel like that's, um, that's what I love about the gospel. And that's something that I always seek and I pray for is that I want to have, you know, when we read the stories in the scriptures and we read the stories of the restoration, it's not just this happened to them. They were special. It's like, 
do we want to be a part of that story? Because if we're living in the last days, this is when all of them wanted to live. So we have that opportunity. I think we have that agency to just ask God to help us be a part of that story. And he can step in and, and make that happen and give us those experiences. Yeah. And in, in just really quick, that's what um, President Henry B. Eyring said at the devotional at BYU Hawaii, because like he was addressing uh, questions from students about what advice would he give them for after they're done with, with college, once they graduate. And he related it to uh, what they should do. Um, like they should consult with the Lord in what he would have them do now that they have this degree and they have these new skills, pray to the Lord, because he said that as well as I know the Lord and what he's trying to do. I'm like paraphrasing. Uh, he's yeah. trying to get yeah. everyone ready for the second coming. And uh, if you'll pray and consult with your, your patriarchal blessing, there's things that he does want you to do and, and you can yeah. play a big part. Um, so it, there's a part for you, essentially in, in this play, you have a part. Yes. And if you look for yes. it, you'll find it. And you'll yes. be able to do it. Yes, that's exactly right. And I think that, um, you know, I'm going to talk about it in another post, but for me, kind of someone that embodies this, like a scripture hero of mine, like one of my favorite people is the story of Mary of Bethany and how she was a woman of spirit and understanding. Um, and she had, she had an understanding of what was going to happen with Christ. I mean, she was able to anoint his head and feet in Christ, you know, proclaim that that was for and to, to prepare him for the burial. So you have a, a woman that has this understanding and is acting in accordance to that understanding. And, um, but how I'm sure it's scary for her to take that, you know, that expensive gift into anyway. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Cause I have a little mm -hmm. post about that, but, um, but yes, I think looking to the scriptures to help us overcome those barriers, you know, if we're just thinking, oh, I'm just going to do my comfortable thing. Um, that if you step outside of that comfort zone, then you kind of feel that gap. You feel that anxiety, you feel that like fear. Um, but just like, I guess the second coming, the more opposition, maybe the more fearful or the harder it is for you, then God will step in and fill that. Um, if, if that's what it is that you're supposed to be doing, but I think it's important to also know to push through it and to be patient. And that just because you feel fearful doesn't mean that it's not the right thing. So, mm -hmm. um, let me go really quick to. Um, so I have a post here. It's about the mysteries and the miracles of the ark. And this is kind of cool on. So looking back, like, I, I feel like it's so cool when you have the Lord in your life, you can look back and say, oh my gosh, like I had no idea that this would be this perfect, almost like symbol of what the new year would be. Right. So we were celebrating with our family. We decided to celebrate with just, uh, you know, our family and our kids. And um, at the end of the night, we were just all getting kind of tired. We put the little kids to bed. And my husband said, let's watch, um, let's watch, uh, uh, what's it? the, the arc, the, the arc show, the, <laughs> what did I say? The, um, Indiana Jones. Thank you. Sorry. Oh, okay, a, okay. a brain freeze. Indiana Jones. <laughs> he was like, let's watch Indiana Jones. And, um, cause our kids love that, you know, and every time we go on the Disneyland ride, we're like, oh my gosh, we need to watch it. For some reason, we never think to watch that movie. So we're like, okay, we gotta watch, we gotta watch this movie. Um, and so we finished watching that and it was really late at night. And I'm about to go to sleep. And I remember, oh, you know, every year I like to think of one word for the year. And so I, I just, I'm like, well, maybe the answer will come to me in the morning when I wake up or, you know, maybe right now. And so I just, I said a quick prayer. I was going to go to sleep. Then I thought, well, I better just open the scriptures for one second in case God has an answer ready. Right. If you're, if you're asking, you start a conversation with God, you better give him a chance to answer. And yeah, boy, did he, because I opened up my phone. And it was like a YouTube video just started playing. It was not a YouTube person that I generally listen to. And I hadn't even pressed play or anything like that. Um, and I thought, well, that was really weird, but maybe there's a purpose. So I listened to it for a little bit. And he's talking about Indiana Jones. He's talking about huh. um, relating the Ark of the Covenant and how, you know, there's some things on there, but like that are true and not true, but how we can use these things, have conversations with our children and how, um, you know, there, you look at the restoration, you look at the scriptures and, um, you have things like the Leahona and you have, um, just the miracles that are inside of our covenant. And we need to teach our children about these things and not shy away from, um, the miracles of the gospel. And so anyway, so it was just, I was like, wow, okay. That was definitely a message that I needed to hear after just showing my kids that movie. Um, 
And that just came to me that arc was going to be the word for the year. And um, so I found what, that. So what was the word of the year for last year? If you don't mind me asking. So last year was mindfulness and oh my gosh, I learned so I learned my more than my fair share of things about mindfulness. I would say one of the best things that I learned about mindfulness was actually taking care of your mind, like being conscious and proactive about, I think your brain is a very powerful tool. And I think we talk about faith a lot in the church, but I think there are a lot of uncommon like tools and things that if we can like get out of the box, I think a lot of us just think, oh, faith means I'm just hoping really hard. I just like hope harder is going to happen. And that's a part of it. But I think there are a lot of ways to um, fine tune our faith. And part of that has to do with the way that we use our brains and taking care of it and keeping out things that are distracting, things that are degrading. And um, there are also different tools for kind of just being mindful calming our brain getting those like I actually did a lot of just kind of scientific research as well looking at like getting into a place where your brain waves are kind of at an even level and you're therefore able to receive you have to get your brain to a certain point so you can better receive revelation and um and I feel like it has helped me immensely I think it is part of I think this past year of working on that has helped me this year to be receiving so much more help it's really interesting that you would have um, mindfulness last year and then the arc this year because um, there's different schools of thought. I, I think in Judaism where they compare the temple, like Solomon's temple and the second temple to the human body. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. it's almost like it it's uh, designed after the human body. Like when you go into the temple mm -hmm. uh, back in those days, you should know the 10 commandments. So that's like the 10 toes, you know, and the two feet, yeah. the two tablets, yeah. 10 toes, yeah. you go in and then, you know, you have the altar and you also have with, with Solomon's temple, you have the, um, I think it's called the bronze sea, which essentially is now baptismal font, which is like, it's a birthing area. Right. 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 And then you go into the sanctuary and you have the showbread, you have the menorah, which is like, you could compare that to like a stomach and a heart, like the light of Christ is in your heart. The Holy ghost is in your heart. And then yeah. the altar of incense, which is like praying. But then when you go into the Holy of Holies, it's a uh, shaped like a cube and you have the ark in there and the ark, uh, according to this, the way that some people look at it is kind of like the mind. It's like the brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. You have like Joshua's staff in there. And then you have the 10 commandments that are in there, like things that you're supposed to like, it's like, it's like a symbol, symbol of having God's laws in your mind and remembering mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. manna, which was a miracle mm -hmm. that sustained Israel as they were traveling. Mm -hmm. So I feel like those two, those two things are very related. Yeah. yeah. No. And I have um, done a little bit of, I have heard, you know, some of what you said. And so I think that's, but it's, I'm definitely a deep diver. Like I definitely did a deep dive. I'm very open-minded. So I'll go to all kinds of resources. Um, but I keep the restoration of the gospel, the prophets, the apostles, the scriptures. That's my core. So I'm not afraid to read things that, you know, might have some truth and some false in there. And to me, it's an exercise in discerning truth and error. And I just collect up all the truth that I can from all the different sources that I can find it and just kind of try to apply that. Um, but for instance, like, you know, like one of the things that I learned was for saying like, how do we say more powerful prayers, right? We know there's different like degrees, right? You say your quick prayer, your heart, your mind's not in it. Um, so how can we get our minds more into our prayers? How can we like access that, um, that power and communicate with God? And I feel like I did a lot of kind of delving into just as I'm praying, also adding visualization to that. And, but before I do the visualization, I also, um, I did some reading about kind of ways to just calm our minds, to get it to just you know, if your mind's racing and distracted, or they call it popcorn brain, you know, your TikTok brain, you just have these things. Um, you're not going to be as tuned in, right? It's like a radio. You got to find, you got to figure out how to tune your brain before you can get that. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I really deep dive into a lot of those different resources on kind of how to get your brain into the right, into the right state and just kind of getting all doing everything I can with all the knowledge that's out there to get my brain fully tuned in and then to go from there. So yeah. So yeah, it has been a very yeah, interesting. So, um, so anyway, so going back to 
the ark is kind of interesting because it it reminds us of just all the miracles we have the miracles of you know Noah's ark and we have the ark of the covenant um and also I mean this this book of Mormon sharing was just a huge miracle so my experience with it was I thought I'm just going to do what I can. And again, that comes back to kind of a Mary of Bethany thing that she teaches me in the scriptures is that, you know, Christ said that she has done all that she could. And I always think I'm just going to do what I can, even if it's piddling. Um, and I was able to share with a lot of people and I challenged the youth to share. And then of course they ended with miracles. So we ended up sharing 88 um, copies of the Book of Mormon through text and other, you know, messages. And that's kind of my number. And I, I did find it interesting. Some of the people that have come on and they talk about, you know, these numbers and, and um, I never heard like other people say that. So I was like, wow, that's me too. I always like eight is my number. I still always see eights. And so, and doctor comes 88 means like everything. And it's all about the same coming. And so certain things. And I think that, you know, numbers are symbols and symbols, whether it's the rainbow, whether it's a number, like there are things that have personal meaning to you and you have a responsibility to learn about these things and you kind of work with God to ascribe meaning to it. And then God can use those things to continually ascribe more meaning to that. And so I feel like as I go on, God just piles things like deeper meanings, more layers so that these symbols have even more and more meaning. So um, every time these things appear, it's kind of like God's wink, like remember all those other things? Like mm -hmm. this is another one, you know? Yeah, I totally, um, I totally agree with that. <clears throat> In yeah. fact, uh, for us, uh, as we were uh, <clears throat> deciding to whether we were going to move to Kansas or somewhere else, uh, Kansas is the 34th state of the union. And so um, 34 would kind of pop up from time to time in significant yeah. ways, almost as like a, a re reaffirmation that yes, like that's where you should yeah. go. And that would have been something that would have been unique to us. It's not like 34 universally for everybody means Kansas, but for us, right, okay. right, yeah. right. Yeah. It's like people think, oh, I'm going to Google search. Like, what does this mean? And you can, like, you could like start that as a foundation. I think when I was younger, I, I think the first thing I ever learned about, you know, numbers being a symbol or even that crossing my mind was that, you know, the number eight was related to Jesus Christ or no, I think it was actually as a child. I said, the number eight is my favorite because that's when you get to get baptized. And so it just built from there over my life. Like, I'm like, eight's a really cool number. That's my lucky number because that's when you get to get baptized. Um, and then it's just kind of built from there. Um, and so that was really special to kind of end with knowing that we had 88 shares. And, um, but it was, you do these things and you start diving in, you think like, well, should we be searching the ministries? And I feel like, you know, first Nephi, the first thing he says, is that having had a knowledge of the goodness and the mysteries of God, therefore I make a record of my proceedings in my days. And um, anyways, he talks about being born of goodly parents. And so this comes back to that lightning the scriptures. Like the first thing he said is that, um, you know, because of his parents, he, he um, had a great knowledge of these things. And so he was making a record. He was sharing, he was putting out there. It's and, interesting that, um, that essentially that's how the Book of Mormon starts out. Like one right. of the first lessons that you learn is that the difference between Nephi and his brothers is that he was seeking the mysteries. He wanted to right, know right. what his father knew. He wanted to learn directly from God. So he had like a burning desire for knowledge and yes. it was given to him. Yes. And so if we do the same, then it'll happen for us too. You that's to exactly right. And that's like, I guess that's the miracle I'm trying to share is I am constantly just I'm um, just shocked at how, like, I feel like I do have just this natural thirst. Like I want to be a part of the story. Like I want to have these experiences that people in the scriptures did. And God is so generous in giving us those experiences and helping us. And, um, but we also have to want it enough to do all the work, right? Spend the mm -hmm. time reading and pondering and doing that. I think that's where maybe some people get tripped up or they get stalled in that, but, um, but it definitely bears a lot of fruit and I've, and I've seen that. And so, um, so as I was like, so for, for instance, just thinking about, but I just think you do have to be careful what you share. Some things you can share, some things you can't. And um, I was kind of praying about that as far as what things to share. And it was an interesting response. And I feel like that's the interesting part of personal revelation is answers come to you that you're like, well, okay, well, that was what I was expecting. <laughs> um, but I prayed about that. And I just, um, I heard, I heard the sentence, a new time and season is coming. And so I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. That, um, you know, sounds like second coming stuff. Um, but then I also, I saw, um, like it was a newspaper. So it was a newspaper with three circles on it and it was Russia, China and the United States. And um, 
So usually after that happens, I have to continually like think and ponder on it to get the full meaning. Sometimes I'll have it like a little bit of meaning and I'll think more on it to get more meaning. And the more I thought about it, I thought, well, obviously the newspaper is like, yes, share, like green light, share. Um, a new time and season is coming. So this was the one that I was thinking about. And then, so it was like, I heard that with the word season. And then that next morning you posted about seasons from Bruce R. McConkey. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So that just builds upon the <laughs> flipping your third rainbow and like tying the rainbow in a season. So again, it's just like playing on more meaning to these symbols, which is really exciting. Um, <laughs> so that was really cool. And so that kind of gave me a deeper understanding of what that might mean. Um, and so I go into on here. So you got to kind of dive in to read it. But um, another aspect of that, as I thought about it, was just that, um, you know, you have these three circles. And I think that um, it just really came to me that like, like the three circles of judgment that you have things coming, climate crisis, conflict, contagion, you kind of think about like those three things, just think about there have been two world wars, two world wars, there's probably, you know, eventually going to be the third, some people might say we're already in it, but um, kind of the final one, then three is kind of just that fullness, like indicating we're close to that end of the time. Um, but it's interesting because he, um, like you think about those things and it sounds, you know, worrisome. So sometimes I feel like uh, inspiration will come to me and maybe my natural response is, oh my gosh, that's scary. Like, I don't want to think about that. Um, but then I feel like the spirit will always follow it up with um, a, like a merciful thing, like, but, but this is like, what you need to do. And so I, I noted on there, I felt actually what it was is earlier, I had like woken up really early in the morning, like 4 a.m. And I just recorded the scripture in Psalm 90. And so I had no idea what was in Psalm 90, but I just felt like I need to go to Psalm 90. And it was so interesting because you read about it and it talks about, it basically encompasses all those things. And it talks about the number 1000 fires and floods and, um, and then at the very end of it, it talks about what it is that we need to do to escape. And we need to, you know, apply our hearts unto wisdom and we need to repent. We need to also, I feel like a big part, a huge part is to um, have worship and wonder. And so that's what I'm trying to do with my site. And that's what I want to promote is for people to worship more and to have wonder and to see the beauty and to focus on the glory of God and, um, and to have the beauty of the Lord be upon us. And it's um, on here. So at the very end, then it talks about the floods. It says, the floods have lifted up. O oh Lord, the floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, day than the mighty waves of the sea. And then thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, O oh Lord, forever. So um there's a lot of answers there about, you know, sharing our testimonies and sharing the truths that we've learned um, and just remembering that um, God rules. And, you know, with my heritage, it was kind of cool because when I was first talking to you, I, I marked on here how I made just a little personal note that it says that, you know, God reigneth. And I made a little note about um, Lydia Knight and she used to say, anyway, so this is kind of cool because when I was first um talking to Jared so just for everybody that doesn't know the story when Jared and I were first talking we talked on the phone before the interview and I was talking about how you know we need this is you know women have a special role to play in preparing for the second coming and um as I'm just starting this online journey um for me that I was trying to think of I like to think of people right I like to think of scriptural people and people in my life who I can kind of follow in their footsteps and um like I just mentioned Hannah Stoddard to Jared and when I said that, yeah. like, <laughs> Jared was just like, I just had an interview with Hannah's daughter today. So it's just kind of funny how it was, it was just, so random. Yeah. It was so so random. I was like, I literally just talked to her a few hours ago. Yeah. And I hadn't mentioned the name of any other person in the entire world. And I was just like, oh yeah, like Hannah's daughter. Like she just, she's just been sticking out in my mind as a woman in modern days who is sharing her testimony and doing everything that she can to um, share these beautiful truths with the world in the best way that she can. Um, and so I felt like that was such a tender mercy. So I'm like, oh, it's just miracles upon miracles. And now I get to follow that person because that was the last interview that you did. And so it's kind of cool because first we had a descendant, a, knight, a descendant of the Knight family and they were like the biggest champions and friends. They never felt like Joseph Smith had so many friends that fell away, but 
Joseph Smith called them his faithful friends, and he pronounced so many blessings upon the Knight family and their posterity because they were so true and faithful throughout that whole thing. And um, so you have a knight, and she was talking about miracles and blessings, and then you have somebody who is talking directly about Joseph Smith, and she's all about like getting back to the basics and the power of the restoration of the gospel and how we need to like really focus on the Book of Mormon and on the so many like amazing truths that Joseph Smith gave us because when we do that, that is how we find those miracles. And, um, and so that was just a really cool thing. So I sent her, um, a little message and she just said, Oh yeah, Lydia Knight, um, just explain her. I'm like, you know, told her that story and she said, Oh yeah, Lydia Knight's motto, you know, God rules. And, um, so I thought that was really cool because that is something that I think about too. So again, it's just amazing how on the internet you can find people that have these, um, experiences. So, and yeah. then Anyways, and I posted here on at the very end, Jared, do you remember the arc from? Because I thought this was amazing because oh gosh, you notice yeah. like the, the A, R, K, and how the K, I mean, it's just funny how things in the world, like I'm like, okay, so I picked the word arc. And then the first thing that like crazy thing in the world that's happening, the world is calling them arc storms. And you go into all the details about like why they do that. But um, if, you know, if you want to go into more, read the scripture, because the scripture that I talked about, I highlighted in the color. So um, here in blue is the floods and um, the pink is kind of about the love and the mercy. And then if I like bold it, it's maybe some of the more judgment things. And then um, some of it too, I highlighted, you know, noting that the number a thousand, like a thousand years, which is the day. So kind of like tying that all in. And that's so interesting how things like in my life happen and then things in the world are happening. And um, anyway, so moving on from that, I want to just touch on really quickly um, going to my other post. So, uh, before we move on just really quick, <clears throat> cause you, yeah. we're, you're just talking about women and yeah, we were talking about that and yeah. yes, I, I do think that as we approach the millennium and then who, who knows what'll happen in the millennium, um, right. Bruce R. McConkie talks about how most likely there's going to be doctrines that we have no knowledge of right now. We're going right. to be essentially advancing spiritually as yeah, yeah. a world and as a church. Yeah. And I'd be interested to see what will happen specifically with women, because it seems like there's more and more focus being put on women. I don't think it'll ever get to the point where like women ever take the, the responsibilities of men, you know, as far right, as like right. priesthood, but like, mm -hmm. as far as like, there may be other things that we don't know about now, yeah. other roles, other things, abilities, responsibilities yeah, yeah. that they have that are going to be unveiled either yes. before or, or in the mm -hmm. millennium. I think that's definitely true. And I think, um, so I feel like my, um, my next post kind of goes into that a little bit more. And I feel like, um, women is definitely kind of part of the mystery. So I love the mysteries because it's this, you don't get the whole picture. It's like God slowly reveals the picture and you get a little bit more and then he confirms it. And it's kind of this like exciting hunt to find out we're just because we know, I mean, there's truth, you know, I'm sure we have just a tiny, tiny sliver of the truth. We have um, eternities of truth to learn in our lives. And, um, and I think that, uh, yeah, an awesome part about that is that as members of the church, we have the knowledge that we can go to the temple and we can approach God. We can, um, learn those truths from God himself. And, um, and anyways, but before, before we go to that, so my post is going to, my next post that I go to, we'll go into that a little bit, but on my last post, we were talking just a little bit about, you know, kind of some, some of the judgments and things. And sometimes I, you know, you want to kind of gloss over that. Um, but, and, and again, another confirmation is here, just talking about Bruce Armour Conkey. And that's what I wanted to talk about before we moved on was, um, like right before I started this post, I noticed that the millennial Messiah book was just sitting there. I didn't know it was in, in my bookshelf. I have a bunch of books right there, but it, it was like, it had been pulled out. Like when my kids like pulled it out and set it right there. And I thought, Oh, I didn't even know I had that book because when I was looking for, when you posted that, I didn't even know I had that book. I was thinking, I thought I had it online and I ended up just searching for it online. And I kind of just, you know, was studying that a little bit more. And so I was excited to see that there you go. I had it right there. And I thought maybe I'll look at it really quick. Cause maybe there's something, some inspiration that will come to me before I start. And it was like, I opened up to it and it was, um, exactly kind of tell me what I didn't want to do, but, um, I'll just say like a little, cause I'll let Bruce R. McConkie say this. And he just says that, 
Um, let all men know the coming wars and desolations. Let them know that Armageddon is at the door. Let them know that the sword of the Lord's justice hangs heavily over all men. Let not these things be hidden from them. They are entitled to be warned and God by the mouth of Isaiah raises the warning voice. And that's pretty interesting because I think a lot of people in the church think like, oh, if Armageddon's at our doors then the prophet's going to get up there and say, the Armageddon is, or like, this is exactly, he's going to play out exactly what's going to happen. But, um, you know, you look at the scriptures in Jesus Christ, why was he emphasizing to study Isaiah? I mean, he said, read the words of Isaiah. If he said, don't worry about the scriptures and the prophet's going to tell you every single thing, then, um, then he would have said that. And it's, you know, of course we listen to the prophet and apostles, but I think when it comes to like preparing for the harder times, like the prophet's focus is on, you know, pointing us to the good things and the miracles and telling us to go get personal revelation. Um, but one other thing that Bruce R. McConkie said is he said, you can discern the face of the sky, but can you not discern the signs of the times? That's, you know, in Matthew 16, he says the true signs of his divinity, you know, were before them. Let them view the true signs of the times, not seek for something they had imagined in their hearts to be the case. So sometimes people think like, oh, this is this needs to happen and I don't need to really be watching. But I think that's kind of what your channel is all about is just keeping an open mind. And I think as you get closer and closer to the times and you're actually seeing the events that are happening, you get a better idea and you get more knowledge, you get more understanding and you can feel it like you're better prepared and you feel like, okay, like I'm watching, I'm seeing these things coming. Um, you can prepare yourself mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. Um, and he says that, um, the true signs were before them and they could be read as easily as the signs foretelling the day's weather. And so it is today. The Lord has poured and is pouring out the signs of the times on every hand. He is showing forth the very things promised of old that are to herald the coming of the son of man. An issue before all men is whether they are able to read the signs of the times or whether they will be, whether they will ignore the divine warnings and continue on their godless course to an assured destruction. Um, and he said unto this true saints have this promise unto you, it shall be given to know the signs of the times and the signs of the coming of the son of man. Um, so, and I think that it's, you know, I know Jared, you've talked about this a lot that we are told to watch and watching is, I think just a part of helping us to, um, face reality. And, and it's kind of a good lead into where I'm going with um, some stories about like women and Mary Bethany and the role that women play. Um, so let's go straight into that because I think women do have a role as far as kind of preparing. I mean, the second coming, the big analogy is giving birth, right? So women know a lot about this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And, you know, just a little anecdote. Um, <clears throat> I think it was the, wait, was it was the last time, maybe it was two times ago when I was talking to Rabbi Gerfin, uh, their view of men and women is, and I'm not saying necessarily that this is right, but like it kind of rings true a bit. Yeah. That they view man as the inferior creation because, <laughs> because man was made from the earth, but woman was made for man. And so, and I think I know, okay. So I don't want people to like lose their minds over that because I'm not like pushing like a feminist right, right, thing. Right. But what I'm saying is that women are more, um, refined uh there's been times when i've compared men and women to hardware and software where for a computer system to work you need three things you need hardware so you need a keyboard you need a monitor you know microphone whatever is you're trying mm -hmm. to do but mm -hmm. it doesn't do you any good uh just by itself and what what's right. really really valuable is the software the mm -hmm. the the thing that's more intangible it, it operates kind of like on a higher level than just like buttons on a keyboard. Um, but they have to work together. They, they complete a system. And, and then the third element would be the user, uh, which is the human being, which I, I think in our case, like when you think of a marriage, that would be Christ or that would be God, you know, you've completed a system and now he uh, directs you. And then, you know, we'll continue that into the eternities once we have our own spirit children. But um, but when it comes to women, it's like, well, it's just like that, you know, software comes from, you have to, you have to have hardware first. You can't just like, you, yeah, you can imagine code or you can imagine it, and it but it's like intangible and, until you have the hardware in place first, then yeah, yeah. You can, and I think that it's like along those lines, symbolically why Adam was created first, uh, and then Eve you know, it's the same with like the sun and, and the planets, like according to science, 
planets are essentially created from stardust like they're they're um their host star essentially but yeah it's like the yeah. same thing you can't have life on the sun <laughs> like i hate looking at the sun it's just like oh <laughs> but like you have planets that are beautiful and they can they're hospitable they can yeah support life and they work together so that you know so that that can happen so anyway that those are just some of my thoughts about that no i think those are i think those are really great thoughts and i think a lot of it comes down to really really just put aside our insecure feelings about like what who's who has the better gifts or who you know there's always that insecurity there and, and maybe particularly for women it, it has been the case there's been a lot of oppression of women in the history of time um so um but i think that um like you're what you're saying is is true just in the sense that a lot of these you know things these symbols they tell us about things that are um intangible and and complex are things that we learn uh by the spirit and so anyways that's a perfect lead-in so talking about like stardust as being the beginning of all things let's talk let's go straight into a little bit about the stars and women so that was a perfect (laughs) lead-in oh good let's see i can't quite share he gets disabled sorry we started everybody we started up a new zoom so i have to switch that or i have to click that option okay you should be able to do it now oh Okay, there we go. Okay, so I want to just go to. Um, okay, so here we are. So this post, this post is actually a very, very special post to me. It, um, I feel like my words can't even begin to describe <laughs> this experience, um, just because the story means a lot to me. And I think um, it's this, um, the scripture story, and all these things kind of tie in together. So just kind of starting out with. Um, like, so the revelation, so back, going back to, I don't know if like, maybe do people remember the revelation 12 sign. So there was just a lot of kind of to do online Christians, people all over the world were kind of going crazy about this. They were saying, oh, there's gonna be the rapture. All these big things already happened. Nobody knew what exactly was going to happen on this day. Um, and so basically you go back to on September 23rd, 2017, there was a sign in the heavens. Um, and you have this aligning of the planets and constellations and you know, it's interesting because I kind of found on like searching for it, I found that um, John Pratt had posted this article and he is um, a member of the church that he's in astronomy. His profession is like teaching astronomy and also like kind of going into prophecy. And so he basically confirmed that like, yes, this was a rare thing. His take on it was what, from what he knew was that this happened in 2 BC, it happened in 1832. So during the time of the restoration, so you have the birth of Christ, you have the restoration, and then you have the latter days with us right now. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's has a lot of um, interesting symbolism in the scripture and um, kind of what caught my eye too is that, um, so just to review really quick about kind of what it says, if you're not familiar with it, just a few verses of it. It says, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. So we have a lot of um, very second coming. I mean, this is Revelation 12. So this is like second coming imagery. And we have, um, you know, kind of things I'm interested in. Second coming, women, you know, these kind of signs in the heaven, the stars. And, um, and so I thought it would be pretty interesting to learn an astronomer's take on this. And, um, so just to kind of point out, he says, the verse tells us that, you know, great wonder in heaven that can be translated as sign. And the word sign referring to the heavens often means constellation. So when someone asks like, what's your sign? And the answer would be, you know, the name of that constellation. So, um, the prophet Joseph actually changed the word wonder in this verse to sign, which is consistent oh. with that interpretation. So a lot, a lot of times Joseph Smith was very much like, no, it's, the, it's, it's exactly what it means. And this, you know, what the scripture says is what it means. And so here's kind of just a picture of what was going on in the sky. So there's a lot of, you know, speculation from people, what's going to happen. Um, and, you know, it's interesting because God does tell us to watch and to discern the signs of the times and also that he does use timing coincidences even signs in the sky to confirm truth. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons. Sorry, I turn that into a rainbow. And for days and years. And while everyone was watching for a huge event to take place, 
um, I looked on that day and I noticed that it was going to be a women's conference. And I thought, oh my gosh, women's conference. So you have like the women in the sky and we're going to be hearing a special uh, message for women on that day from the Restored Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So this is God's word that he is going to be putting out there through um, women's conference. And there really is nothing more powerful than God's word. So I was very excited. I'm like, what's going to, what are they going to say? Um, and so before that though, here's like a little background as to what got me interested that, that, that there might be something to this. Um, so, you know, so it's kind of interesting because, um, my, one of my, so my maiden name is Washburn and this, this line, it goes back to Abraham Washburn. He was a very, like, he converted the church was a very close friend of Joseph Smith. So lots of great stories there. He was actually converted by Harley Pratt. So I feel like it's kind of interesting because I, God speaks to me through a lot of like timing and seasons. And I see things like that, like have happened or that are going to happen. And it just kind of like all ties together. It's hard to explain, but it's just something that happens like over and over again. It's these things that have to do with timing. And, um, I found that interesting that, um, so John Pratt, who's a descendant of Parley Pratt posted about he, one of the things that he also studies is these like nine sacred calendars. So sacred calendars from cultures all over the world. And he kind of tries to to see if you know sometimes they line up, but um, he pointed out that on this particular day it was sacred on all nine of the calendars. Like you can't get any more. Like, yeah, you can't have any more evidence than that. Um, and that being said, I found it interesting that you talked about you know the the Pratts, you know Orson Pratt and stuff that they said because I will actually say that from that website I wouldn't recommend going into a lot of stuff on that website because he eventually gets too far out there. I feel like just like his ancestry, he kind of goes a little bit too far with some of the stuff. Whereas I like to say really. Uh, I mean, you know, I don't yeah. like to get really carried away with that stuff, but, um, but I felt like just hit, but that doesn't mean that he does not have that expertise of like confirming this is what's happening in the sky. And these are also like things that happen, pointing out those facts with that expertise. Um, and then I discovered that um, the first sunstone on the Nova Temple, so was placed on September 23rd. So in 1844, on that same date, you have the sunstone that's being placed on the temple and not just that, but there are sunstones, there are moonstones, and there are stars. And this is my temple that I was married in. And um, so I love that. And they were actually placed in likeness of that sign. So those like, like imagery and those symbols are on the Nava temple point us to the Revelation 12 scripture. And that um, there was actually a hymn. It was the first on the original hymn book, the first hymn. So in our current hymn books, that's not true. But back in the day, the first hymn was actually written by Parley Pratt, so you have this connection between the Pratts and the Revelation 12 sign, and um, and this song, the first song was The Morning Breaks, and you can click on my website to kind of read that song, it's kind of a cool, so kind of cool thing to look at the words, um, but anyway, so, so this connection, um, I witnessed caught my attention because, you know, I was married in the Nava Temple, and that whole thing about, you know, the Pratts and the Washburns, and I felt like now his ancestor was kind of pointing me to the pointing out these truths about, you know, Revelation 12, and thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and it, so if you look at also my ancestor, he said that, um, so he's documented. So I have this documentation of him exclaiming to everyone, once he got baptized, he said that this new gospel was like a light in the darkness. And he thought everyone who heard it would see the beauty of it. So he's talking about this light and this beauty and to me that's the imagery evoked by the revelation 12 scripture is this light and this beauty and um you also think of the brightness of the sun like the celestial kingdom and you have um you know kind of this imagery of this celestial beautiful woman and um when he was first baptized you know he was just telling it, he he saw it. it was like he saw imagine him seeing like the sign in the heavens but in his heart and his mind's like he's like the gospel is this amazing wonderful thing he's trying to tell everybody about it but not everyone sees it it's kind of like the 12 sign like like it's happening but you actually can't see it because it happened in the middle of the day in the brightness of the sun so you have to rely on others and tools to see it like it's almost like you have to use your spiritual mind to know that it's there and yeah. i was like he sees it but his wife is completely against it like adamantly against it um, but it was kind of cool because Joseph Smith actually prophesied that within a few weeks she would be baptized and eventually she was. And then later on, she was actually told directly by Joseph Smith that her place in the celestial kingdom was secure on account of her liberality. She was very um, charitable and generous and such. And um, so that was kind of cool. Just um, 
so not only are these like lights and the stars and planets aligned in a manner to display this glowing woman or symbol of the church with all the special bodies in the right place, but also the planet Jupiter spends about nine months looping in that womb area. So, I mean, the constellation there is made in the likeness of a maiden as a woman. And then you have that, this, you know, symbolism of, of the child and it's there for eight months and then it actually exits. Like, you know, you see like what the astronomers are pointing out and it's like, going to be birth and um it was going to be birth on the 23rd it's like okay what's being birth on the 23rd um just another side note what i thought was kind of interesting that the blood moon tetrad so you know you also had people all around christians already oh the blood moons and what does it mean and i thought i was always interesting just the interesting fact that three and a half years before this um revelation 12 sign um that was when the first like blood moon happened um and revelation 12 it talks about that time period of three and a half years so just another kind of tie in there um but anyways, another little like personal note that I thought is kind of cool that pulled my interest into it as well is that if you look at, if you think of September 23rd, like if you're thinking of a woman giving birth, the pregnant date for that is um, like the zero pregnant date is actually like my birthday. And then the conception date is actually my mom's birthday. Um, <laughs> I just thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I, mean, cool. Actually, I actually like just barely discovered that. And so again, it's kind of like, that was such a treasure because that was after I was doing all this work on it and I hadn't known that. But again, it's like those symbols and just building up, right? And I feel like, you know, looking at all the things I'm saying here, this is not like doctrine or things. It's kind of like how God just points things out and makes things special and he likens it to our lives. And um, I think that's kind of the, just how things work in the temple as well. And um, well, and, and what's fascinating though, <clears throat> is that, um yeah, because like you're not going to necessarily hear this you know in general conference or somewhere but the fact that because i i didn't know until you that this was happening during the women's conference and what's fascinating is that you know it's that same year <clears throat> that you had the eclipse everybody knows about the 2017 eclipse mm -hmm. and uh the path of totality went over all the church sites in yeah. missouri yeah. and it couldn't go further north or further south around some of the sites would have been missed so it was a very uh church specific sign yeah and so is the one in in 2024 because those that one's going to go over you know palmyra in kirtland ohio like those like eastern church sites so yes those two are very specific to the mm -hmm. church and then mm -hmm. this one is too so uh, this, this is like one of those things that you have to kind of discern and be like, okay, how likely is it that these big signs are going to happen on specific w w things that are specific to the church? So anyway, right. I just wanted to right. say that I'm interested to see what, whatever was said in this conference. Yes. And I think that actually that's one of the things that I love reading and like about sacred calendars and all of that was I actually, it's very interesting to see. He just point out some very interesting things about, um, how events of the restoration coincide with Hebrew holy days. So I really, I love learning about the Hebrew holy days and how it ties in and all these like seeming coincidences because there is just a never ending list of them. And it's pretty fascinating to actually just start <laughs> learning mm. about them. Um, I'm going to have anyways, to put this so on my timeline and I'll give you credit in, in whatever column I do that in, but uh, th this is pretty, I, I find this pretty significant. Yes, I do too. I feel like this was, was huge. So this is like me sharing this is a big deal because this means like, I felt like this is such a special part about um, and just a lot of personal things that God has shared with me. And, um, and I feel like, you know, for me too, as I, you know, this, this thing that I, with timing and all of that, it kind of helps me. I tend to, to struggle a little bit with feeling shy and, and, um, you know, being fearful or anxious about things. And it doesn't always show like I'm a pretty outgoing person, but on the inside, I, I struggle with that. Um, and it kind of steers me back to remember to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow um, and that the women of the gospel are here for such a time as this. And then President Monson, he said, this is your day. This is your time. And I later, you know, you talked about you know, the, the eclipse and all that, but there's actually kind of a tie in to this because this happened and then you had the eclipse that was right after that. But that eclipse is actually on President Monson's birthday. And I'm, I'm going to go into what um, Sister Eubank said. I feel like her, hers was the opening talk of this and she ties it all into like President Monson and what he says. And it's about like, anyways, this is your day. This is your time. Um, and so um, because of this, I always look for the beauty in God's timing for my life. And I feel like because I'm looking for it, uh, uh, God manifests that in kind of special ways. So um, let, me, let me say something really quick. <clears throat> just, now, this is just for everybody. 
you know, there isn't just one of us that can pick up on all the signs. Like it's a group effort. It's a church wide effort, whether you want to share them here yeah. on this channel or share them with Jen or whatever. It's, it reminds me of how, when I was in the army, one of the thir- first things that they <laughs> teach you is the concept of 360 uh, security, which means that say you're going, you're on foot. Okay. It's a ruck march. You don't have vehicles and you're going in some uh, remote location. Uh, since you don't have tents, so, since you don't have, t- uh, you know, um, vehicles or anything like that, when, when, uh, when the company commander or whoever picks a spot to camp out for the night or for a few days, the way that they set it up is there's a perimeter. And what you do is you're given a certain section and that's where you stay all day on your stomach, you know, and uh, you're supposed to watch your, your sector. And they give you these papers where you're supposed to like kind of map out your sector, like what you're feel the view is oh there's a hill there's a tree there's this da, da, da. Yeah. that that way if you see something you say something and you report yeah. it back yeah. so that the yeah. company commander and um top enlisted people can like make decisions right and yeah. so yeah on this channel as everybody knows uh this is one way to do it and it's not just me there's other channels but um, you know, I, I I find a lot of value in reading all of your comments and your emails. I wish I could get to all of them, but I, but I can't uh, just because of limitations on me. But um, if you come across something, you know, bring it up, tell somebody, because otherwise, you know, other people may not know. You know, I, I don't know how right. many people knew about this, for example, Jen, that, that this was on uh, the general women's conference. So, right, so I, just, right. I, I mean, I went back to your channel and you've like, because you have all this information coming and that's what I love about your channel so much, because I know, like, I am like discovering things. I'm like, oh, this is amazing. And it's exciting. And it's, it's, um, you know, it's, it's very thrilling and just, it keeps like, it's like the wonder and beauty of the gospel, um, yeah. and watching. And so it's, and I feel like that's why we've had so many experiences where like, I'll say something or we're just on the same page and it's just, kind of, I guess, teaching me that fact, that principle. And you think about, you know, going into the millennium and it's all about this. We need to be of one mind and one heart and we need to, you know, work together. No, no man can do anything by themselves and we all have something to contribute when we put it all together. So yep. yeah, I, t- I completely agree with what you're saying as usual. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, so in this Revelation 12 imagery, so following on the exact day of this conference, um, and so, of course, I was so excited to hear what um, what was going to be said. And it was Sister Sharon Eubank who gave the first talk. And her talk was a command for all the women in church to turn on your light. So you think of these beautiful lights in the sky and the sun and the moon, all, all these heavenly lights. And she says, turn on your light. And I was like, oh, this is going to be good. Um, and she says just a few quotes. I can't read the whole talk. But she says, the prophets are calling on us, my sisters. Will you be righteous? Will you articulate your faith? Will you turn on your light? Um, she opened by saying, you might not know this. And again, this is like a special timing thing. Like, oh my gosh, this talk could be any more perfect for what um, I'm feeling and thinking. You might not know this, but President Monson and I are twins. On the very day I was born, in the very hour in Northern California, the 36-year-old Thomas Monson was sustained as the newest apostle. She says, I love my special personal link to the prophet of God, President Monson. Um, so we have a coincidence of dates, times, personal links, the synchronicity reminding me that Women are here for such a time as this to unify and connect hearts and love. And then her talk ends with another quote from President Monson. And she says, my dear sisters, this is your day. This is your time. And again, this time connecting back to what I've learned about the rainbows and the seasons and um, how this connects about to the second coming. And um, so anyway, so Revelation 12 and the flood, then just really quick. So she kind of like then connects to President Monson. And keeping in mind that very soon after was that eclipse, and that was on President Monson's birthday. So he gave a very empowering talk for women exactly 15 years earlier, where he proclaims, ideals are like the stars. You will not succeed in touching them with your hands, but following them, you will reach your destination. Never have women had greater influence than in today's world. So it's like the software you're talking about, Jared. Um, Too frequently, women underestimate their influence for good. Then he goes on to quote Doctrine and Covenants 88, which is my special one. I love that one. And then President Hinckley also, he quoted President Hinckley who said, we live in a world of so much filth. It's everywhere. It's on the streets. It's on television. It's in books and magazines. It's like a great flood. And the serpent casts out his mouth, you know, water is the flood after the woman that he might, and this is, you know, Revelation 12. 
cause her to be carried away of the flood, ugly, dirty, and mean, engulfing the world. We have got to stand above it. The world is slipping in its moral standards, and that can only bring misery. The way to happiness lies in return to strong family life and the observance of moral standards. So we're talking about women and our roles in the family and standing strong and um, kind of raising the bar, raising ourselves above like what's going on in the world. And that is kind of a special thing. I think that women have gifts for doing that and for trying to kind of raise the bar in their lives. And um, so it's kind of, interesting. you know, they talk about this modern day flood and, and in Revelation 12, it talks about this flood and specifically it's coming after the woman. So remember that, you know, the woman also represents the church, but it can specifically be actually special to women as well. Um, I mean, because you look at our world today, I mean, when when in the world has it been a controversial and confusing question to say, what's a woman? Um, and so the question is, does Revelation 12 have a solution to this? This is a big world problem. So what can we as women do? What is the solution? And you look at it and it says that, um, for they have overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood with which the dragon cast out of his mouth. So it sounds like the members of the church are overcoming the world by the blood of the lamb. So they're opening their mouths in power to share their testimonies of eternal truths regarding Jesus Christ. And what truths are they? Well, the earth itself opened its mouth when a buried book, the Book of Mormon came out with the earth. And so, um, so to me, again, this is just like, I have felt the power of doing this plea from Elder Rosman. And this is why as a church, we need to get on there and feel the power of that to flood the earth with the truths of the Book of Mormon so that we can, then how do we clean a filthy world? Well, we need to wash with baptism and burn by fire the spirit, the earth, clean of these filthy waters. And how better to do that than with the words of the Book of Mormon and having those fire truths, the gospel, or our gospel, um, that gift that we've been given. We need to share that with others because, you know, I was writing this and my little um, daughter, Mary, she out to me. She said, mom, did you know that the kingdom of God is the whole world? And I was like, what? That just came out of nowhere. Like we weren't <laughs> talking about that at all. <laughs> I was like, when your child says something so profound and I'm like, wow, okay. I love that, yeah. <laughs> and this is from the mouth of a little girl. I'm like, you're right, Mary. I'm like, these are, pro these are world problems. And we as women, the prophets like yelling at us, like women, you have to lift your voice because you are part of helping to solve this problem. Um, so we have the Revelation 12 solutions, overcome the world by the blood and power of Christ to share your testimony of the wonders and marvels of God. So like me sharing online, that's what I'm trying to do, share the wonders and the marvels of God. Um, and then also to flood the earth with the words of the Book of Mormon. And so doing that with you, I feel like, okay, this is like God is, God is leading me here. And, um, and Real, really that, quick, um, <clears throat> it's interesting because, okay, because again, up until now, I wasn't really aware of what was said during that conference, yeah. but like, it, it's interesting because if you, if you think that President Nelson just decided, oh, women, you know, we need to start mobilizing women, essentially, that like it was his idea, oh, it no. doesn't appear that that's no. the case. No. Like, we, we know all. we know that at least as far back as Spencer W. Kimball, he had that prophecy, although it seems like maybe then wasn't necessarily the time. It was more for now. But the fact that um, she said, this is your time, and it was during President, Nel President uh, um, Monson's time that they were probably thinking about it. And, what, and what's interesting yeah. is that it was during President Monson's time that you you saw another concept kind of come to life in the rising generation. So you have the rising generation that seemed to be really key, uh, especially when it comes to like actual missionary work, like going mm -hmm. out and being missionaries. Mm -hmm. But then the women of the church attracting people to the church mm -hmm. uh, as well as uh, like President Eyring said in October 2020, uh, Sisters of Zion creating the society uh a zion society that that right, would right welcome christ so um i feel like that if you just look at that the, the messaging as far as the women of the church goes we're clearly in a different phase and they have um, a big role to play right now uh, and specifically in connection with the second coming definitely and you look back you know i mean that I mean, Moses, back when you go back to the days of Moses, he was trying to create a nation of priests and priestesses. And then you have Joseph Smith, who was very much like women are, it's it's men and women. He said, it's a nation of priests and priestesses. He would go to the Relief Society and talk to the women about this. Like, we want all of you to be, you know, conversing with God. 
and to be, you know, all in this, putting everything in and we're going to work together. Um, and, you know, you wonder if maybe part of that not being fulfilled was the cultural baggage that would hold women back because all the culture of the world and, and maybe it was just too hard for, for everybody. And I think maybe now some of that cultural just in the entire world has been lifted. And so maybe it's easier to fulfill this kind of like divine guidance that they've been trying to do since the beginning of time to make this happen and maybe a part of um you know the way women have been so oppressed like we couldn't rise to that state until we release kind of that oppression of women and I think just the world itself has released a lot of that so it's kind of like we have this opportunity as women to do things that no one else did even just 100 years ago so yeah. um so it's kind of looking at what is that special opportunity you have as a woman to be here on the earth right now um and Satan's probably played a big role in that because he knows yes, that um yeah women in general tend to be more spiritual uh just they're they're naturally better because men men tend to be more narcissistic men tend to be more competitive controlling stuff like that which um there are healthy levels of that when it comes to like because men are made to kind of like keep order um just like how the sun, you know, it kind of like it, it organizes everything in the system. It gives order mm-hmm. to things, mm-hmm. yeah. but uh, when it goes beyond that, then it starts to smother uh, mm-hmm. the purpose of everything else. And so Satan's probably really wanted to, yeah, to like for women to sh- shut up because he doesn't want goodness uh, to come out into the world. All right. So it's interesting. So we had talked about um, kind of that connection between Pratt and all these things. And here's where, where Pratt comes onto the scene again and, and connecting. Um, the question is, you know, when do we see the fulfillment of this? So we're wanting to cleanse the earth and the state. And we have this prophecy of, you know, righteousness flooding the earth and the burning of the earth. And, um, and it's kind of interesting because Elder Orson Pratt, he said, when Enoch's people obtained the presence of God and their gifts of translation, they attempted, but were not able to spread the gospel across the world and usher in an era of millennial righteousness. The world's rejection of their witness and testimony. Again, you go back to the Revelation 12, this witness and testimony um, actually being spread throughout the world. Um, and, and this is what brought about the flood. And they mourned and prayed mightily with a combined voice that they might be privileged to see a day when that righteousness would flood the earth and evil would not be found upon her face. So I think women do definitely play a special part in that. And um, and those are things that are, ha- are going to happen before on the second coming. So again, that ties it back to that whole flood the earth rainbow, all that, which we discussed. I won't go over that. But um, so going back to that September 23rd with Sister Eubank. So um, I thought it was really cool that Sister Eubank was the one to give the opening talk for this um, because she is, uh, first of all, she's an unmarried woman. So that's kind of a historical type thing that she's not married. She's able to have the spot, but she also is the only woman to ever concurrently head the humanitarian arm of the church while also serving in the General Relief Society presidency. So that's a pretty historical thing for a woman in a role in the church. And also you think about this woman clothed in the sun, there's this celestial kingdom thought. This is like charity right being clothed with the bond of charity so there's all this imagery that really ties in and for to have that be like the head of the charitable organization of the church and the women's organization i mean you have this like like i can't think of a better symbol or the better person for this person to give this talk um about the sign of the woman on this day and um so this is so this is like so amazing um but anyway so like i hear actually in my stake that sister Eubanks, this is after her talk and she just holds a special place in my heart. I hear that she's actually coming on my 15 year wedding anniversary. So the night that my husband and I are going to celebrate her with 15 year wedding anniversary. And it's kind of cool because this concept of, you know, this celestial woman that's like wedding imagery as well. So, um, and this, there's also that link with the president Monson's talk being 15 years before and the flood. And so this is really cool link. And um, so she has this special fireside and there was something like, that went wrong that just for whatever reason not very many people showed up I think there was like some error in like location or something but there were maybe only 30 people there it was a very close intimate group and I just like sat there and got to listen to her and I I actually also got the opportunity to like to minister her I was I was able to make her some homemade bread and some homemade jam and just I wanted to bring her like the best thing and I had written this note like for my heart because it meant so much and so I kind of just share a little bit about like here, I guess it kind of just shared like what was in this note and like how, um, you know, that like 
you know, I, I have had moments in time in the church where I was struggling with, you know, the role of women or just even how the scriptures, there aren't like a ton of women in the scriptures. And so when I'm looking and if I, as a woman want to be a part of the scripture story, I want to have these experiences. Like I don't have too many examples to look to It's like as men do. Right. Um, but, but that being said, I, what I did is, um, you know, I went to the temple and I just, I prayed about it. And, um, this is actually the beginning. Um, I got a really amazing answer. This was actually when I was celebrating my 30th birthday. And this is like my first important, like real dream or like obvious revelation that I've ever had. And it was, um, it was about the story of Mary of Bethany. And I feel like this just kind of set me on this track to where to all the things that I've learned up until this point. So this is kind of the beginning of where I really started like digging into the scriptures before that. I actually had no, I, the scriptures, I had a hard time. I struggled with them. Um, and what I did before that point was I decided like, oh, I struggle with scriptures. I wish that the scriptures were my gift. It was not. I would just always fall asleep or I couldn't hold my attention. Um, what I decided that I was going to do was, um, that we were going to go on a vacation. My excuse was, I don't have time. Like, I don't have time to read the scriptures. I'm too busy. Um, so I just felt like when we went on this vacation, I was like, I am going to just read. Like, I'm going to give this vacation to reading with the thought that maybe the Lord will bless me to have a better understanding of the scriptures. Um, and so during that time, I just wrote a ton and that I continued to within the year, actually read all of the um, books of scripture and all of the manuals. And after that point, it's just been like, I love it. It became something that I love. Um, so that was kind of cool. So, so that kind of had a special place in my heart. And, um, I feel like the story of Mary of Bethany has like such a big deal to do with sharing the gospel because you just look at the scripture. So you have to look at the Joseph Smith version because, um, you know, at first glimpse, it looks like the Joseph Smith trans translation just makes it like a little bit wordy, but if you really look at it, it's actually, um, a chiasmus. And so, you know, chiasmus is emphasizing the importance of something and kind of adding some beauty to this truth. But um, what we learned about Mary Bethany, her story, it says that she hath done what she could. And this is what she has done unto me shall be had in remembrance in generations to come, wheresoever my gospel shall be preached. For verily she has come beforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever the gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Um, and memorial is indicative of a temple covenant language. And, um, you think about what Mary Bethany did and she, um, you know, at that time, it's kind of like, for me, there's so much that I could say about her. I'll probably do another post just about the story of her, but, um, I suspect that like, that there will be more revealed about this, but the main point of sharing is that she embodies like this principle that Christ needs righteous women who are articulate, different, distinct and in happy ways. Mary was unafraid to be different as she let down her hair. So she exposed her hair and washed his feet in this public setting with all of the apostles there. It would have been very taboo um, at that time. And she served in the best way that she could without regard to the criticism around her, which she inevitably did draw. Um, and you know, we have Judas who said, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? So she had this very expensive thing and um, actually have, right here this is a gift that my husband got me because this year this christmas is an actual alabaster she had an alabaster box and she broke it open and then inside was spikenard so this beautiful smell and um and so like by her doing this it was kind of this this beautiful just letting the love flow disregarding what other people would think and just letting that love in her heart and the spirit tell her to do and, um, you know, it also states, you know, when they criticized her, Christ said to, you know, let her alone because she did this, um, you know, in remembrance of my burial. And um, so it's kind of revealing the fact that she had this knowledge where, you know, you think about the crucifixion came and how just surprised it was not like all of the apostles peter james and john were like okay we're getting ready like this terrible thing is coming and the crucifixion's coming and it's going to be the most awful you know the hardest thing but at the same time the best the most glorious and i feel like mary and bethany embodies um the stance that we should take to the second coming because i think that the events leading up to the second coming you think of the imagery they use and it's like the giving of birth and you can giving a birth is really hard and terrible but it's also you know really great because of what comes of it it's the same with christ and so i think mary um kind of embodies how we should like how should we could make our stance like in our attitude towards 
um, what is coming. And also the fact that I find it very interesting that it was, you know, a woman who really had such a good idea of what was coming that she knew exactly how to like prepare and respond. Um, so much so that Christ said that wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world, that we should remember, um, you know, this act and what her example. And um, so anyway, so, so I've just been very tuned into this. So, and you see kind of, you know, women playing a large role in preparation for Christ's coming. So as I'm talking to Sister Eubank, I just kind of explain how this role of women and preparing for Christ. And, and I actually think that when the events of the second coming happen, um, there might be a lot of people that it shakes their testimonies because when things get really hard, they might say, well, why didn't it? like the prophet and the apostles spell out exactly all these like really hard things? Why didn't they like spell it out? But I think there are always parallels. And if you look at kind of the crucifixion as, and the resurrection as a parallel to our time for the really hard tribulations and also like the great things um, that just like Christ was kind of like, he spoke about it, but still people didn't quite understand that he was going to die, that it was going to be um, as difficult as it was and also glorious, right? And you look at how Mary dealt with that and she dealt with it with love and worship. And I think that can tell us a lot about how we should deal with difficulties in our life. Um, I think that worshiping is an, maybe something we overlook sometimes. Um, so anyway, so. that That's why I just, I wonder, I really wonder about the millennium because there might be a lot I, I feel I feel like there's going to be maybe a shift of, I don't know how to word this well okay let me put it this way let me okay let me put it this way this is another thing that the rabbi said because we we talk we actually talk a lot me and him about men and women yeah. because in Judaism there's a lot of just symbolism they really focus on uh and man in woman is very important right um yeah. he we talk a little bit about Kabbalah which is sometimes referred to as Jewish mysticism, which also has to do a lot with um, masculinity, femininity. And I was talking about how, okay, so from a Jewish perspective, <clears throat> why is it that uh, like almost all the prophets have been male, you know? And yeah. um, th this just naturally rose up, by the way. I wasn't like on a crusade or something like that. Right, 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 yeah. And he was like, well, it's because uh, men again they're the this is jewish thought men yeah. are the inferior creation and so god gave them uh these opportunities to essentially be in leadership roles and uh improve themselves spiritually because that does happen if you've ever taught a class if you've ever been called to a leadership role uh you yourself are the one that probably grows the most and mm -hmm. learns the most yeah. and um you think about the, this fallen world since the time of Adam and Eve being thrown out of the Garden of Eden, it's like a it's a really rough place. Uh, there's yeah. all sorts of crappy people all over the place. Everybody's just degenerate. Um, there's fighting and there's um, constant struggles for control, which leads to secret combinations and war and stuff like that. And so this period of Earth's existence is very fallen and men are probably a little bit more suited because they themselves, if you look back to that symbolism of man being made from the earth, you know, mm -hmm. we're living in a fallen earthly existence, but women mm -hmm. are like higher. They're from basically from almost like from a higher plane. And so I wonder if when this time is over, obviously men will still have important roles to play. Um, and I'm not making it really any sort of prediction, but I wonder if there's going to be so much more that women do um they're going to be able to release their full uh potential spiritually whether that be teaching ministering some other doctrine that we don't know uh in the millennium now that we've returned back to a paradisiacal state we're not in the muck that we were before where men are needed to fight wars men are needed to right um right law enforcement even though like you know women obviously fight in wars and they do law enforcement but it's more a man's natural mode of operation yeah yeah so anyway i was just thinking about that yeah that's just, interesting and that kind yeah. of yeah that that as i thought i like that kind of imagery you said it kind of goes right along with this of men men you know from the earth and um yeah i like that thank you that's really 
Um, and so, so anyways, as I'm, as I'm, you know, kind of sharing this with Sister Eubank, I kind of just say that I just know that as, you know, she was there in general conference and, and her words commanding us to turn on our lights, I could just imagine the stars and the plants in heaven lining up to resemble in the likeness of things on the earth, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. I could envision God pleading with me to shine my light and to join this significant force of women around the world. And, um, you know, she spoke those words. It was like, I felt this electrifying charge as I imagined God just painting this beautiful sign in the heaven to encourage us in this great work of building up Zion and helping the church to grow. Um, and then I kind of just said, you know, perhaps like your birthday was, it was a coincidence with President Monson and, you know, President Monson being called was just a coincidence, but perhaps your words about the church growing, women turning on their lights at the same time as this highly anticipated Revelation 12 astronomy phenomenon was just a coincidence maybe. But however, you know, I mean, in that moment, I felt the power of the words of the prophet as she said, my dear sisters, this is your day. This is your time. Um, and I kind of just ended my note there and, um, you know, I raced up to give her my note and to give her, to tell her that we're celebrating our 15 year anniversary and how it was really special. And she was so like awesome. She just like, before I could even ask her to take a picture or anything, um, she said, can I get a picture of you with my, for my private Facebook page? And everywhere I go, I had like one person from my family to hear about. And I was just like, oh, that made me so happy. And um, anyways, so when sister, it was kind of cool because just to also note that what she said, so she was there and she was in this group and then there was actually, she spoke again to a larger group. And this was in the larger group where she actually, her words just tied into all of this stuff so well that it was amazing. Um, so this is what she said. I feel like it was notable for people to hear this. She said the church was organized on April 6th, 1830. And the first thing Joseph Smith did was translate Genesis one to eight, which became the book of Moses. The church learned new stories about Moses and Enoch. Joseph Smith learned he was one in a line of dispensational prophets. He was carrying on the work that they started. Moses was trying to create a nation of priests. However, the people were, you know, kind of too scared or whatever their reasons to approach God and wanted Moses to do it for them. So the Lord had Joseph learn more of their story because because Joseph was having the same amazing revelatory experiences, gathering Israel, walking with God and creating Zion. And in Moses's day, only one priest went through the veil per year, whereas, you know, in the end, the people you know, refuse to do that. But today we have Joseph Smith in the restoration. We can all go through the temple. We can all of us be a part of what it was that Joseph was trying to do. And he talked to the Ruth Society and said, we're, Joseph was trying to create a nation of priests and priestesses. As we all go through the veil, we are all endowed with priesthood power. Um, and so, yeah, contrary to what some people might think that Joseph Smith, like, like Joseph Smith empowered women. He knew exactly what was happening there. And he tried to keep that <coughs> of the priesthood beyond the office um so we like joseph smith are called by name and asked to do a great work um or for being out and weary and well-doing for laying the foundation of a great work is what she said and then out of small things proceedeth that which is great um and this is kind of cool because uh this again relates to the knight family and doctrine covenants 12 like he's told by joseph smith that um he that he's doing a great work and um, so to me, this, this sounded a lot like what she said there. It sounds like this great and marvelous work, right, is about to come forth. So great and marvelous. You have this marvelous sign in the heavens. Um, it sounds a lot like Second Nephi. Therefore, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, a marvelous work and a wonder. And then, you know, the first verse in Revelation 12 is there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. So um, you have all this, like, righteous woman uh, imagery. And, of course, that typifies the church itself so I felt like she told me exactly like what I need to hear that day um and at that time I actually um like this is where I have like this other really cool experience so she came and then um I felt like after what she said I just had this really strong desire to just kind of be a part of these stories and I was thinking about Moses and Joseph Smith and um we just happened to be right after she came going to this trip to Utah and so we were up in the mountains in a cabin and I took this opportunity I thought you know what I want to pray in the mountains you know we have temples now so you don't have to climb mountains and go up there but like how cool would that be to just go pray in the mountains and it was like and I was thinking of all these things that Sister Yvick was talking about on the side and what this means for me and um, at that time I was struggling with um, just some health issues and I was trying to find solutions for that and it was um as I was praying, it's like the sun like burst through the clouds and the trees. It was just like the experience I saw with the rainbow. 
And it was like, just like the story of Moses, it was like the sun on his face. And so it wasn't probably like Moses was like translated or whatever, but it was more just like the sun itself came through. Um, and that was really cool. And then in the story of Moses too, right after that, it's like after the, the sun and the Lord, then it's like Satan. And so as soon as I stood up, it was, I was completely alone. I was in this big field and there was this giant bull, like a black bull at the other end of the field. And at first I was like, oh, no big deal. But then all these like stories keep coming to mind. I'm like, I've had so many stories about like bulls. And if you get too close to them, they'll just absolutely like maul you and knock you down. They can be really aggressive. <laughs> I'm checking it out. And sure enough, it's not neutered or anything. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh. And I have all this Moses imagery. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's Satan. I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm like, I have to have faith. <laughs> <laughs> it was just this really funny experience and um anyway so I just say a little prayer and I'm like no I'll be okay I'll, I'll have faith and um sure enough I was but um I did get like my answer that day and I I liked your post yesterday actually about like the destroying angel and um the word of wisdom because that was the answer that I got it's like if you want to if you want a blessing go to the scriptures and find you have to follow the commandment that gets you that blessing or at least go and like understand that that's what you need to do and do your best right and Christ will fill in the rest but um after that like I went on a 40 day like just a really strict whole foods diet it was really hard it's not my strong point <laughs> after the <laughs> after the praying experience yes yeah I was like that. It was not the answer I wanted, but I was like, okay, I got to do it. Uh, it was really difficult, but then 40 days exactly. So I finished this, um, this challenge and it was very strenuous. I like food. Um, and, um, I like sugar, but, um, after those 40 days, this letter arrives in the mail. And so it's from sister Yuba, Yubank, and she, um, she, uh, she says, she said, like, Dave and Jennifer, this letter is belated, and I hope you realize how sincerely it comes to you meeting you during my visit to Washington. It was a wonderful blessing. Um, seeing you on your anniversary, choosing halfway to attend a leadership training says much about your character. Anyways, and she just basically, like, just wrote this really sweet note, which is really special considering, um, you know, everything that that meant to me and the fact that it arrived 40 days after that. So to me, it was just this, um, just a beautiful thing. And this just, Kind of again just emphasizes these beautiful miracles that can happen in our life when we're reading the scriptures and we're trying to liken it and we're trying to just do what we need to do and god will just like rain these experiences down um and so um like just kind of like on top of that you know we we had talked about how you know that kind of coincidence about talking hannah hannah started and all of that and that kind of ties in with the revelation 12 like the reason i have contact with her is because of this raising the bar Facebook group. So I just wanted to kind of put that awareness out there too, because um, again, I think women have a special place to play as far as raising the bar in our lives and kind of holding the line and doing those things that are hard rather than just compromising and everything and like, well, everybody's doing this or like using the world as our standard, right? Like as long as we're a little bit better than the world, then it's okay. Um, but just holding ourselves and trying to be that example and show like, no, like when we're keeping the comments, they can bring us so much joy. Um, so I kind of just go over that a little bit. Um, but in what we had talked kind of about the Knight family, but um, I think it's interesting how um, the Knight family kind of ties into this as well, just as far as women. Um, I think it's kind of a super interesting coincidence considering the Knights were, um, the Knights were considered like a family at first. So you had, you know, on your channel, you had and I descended, and then um, the, the Smith descendant, and then now another uh, Knight descendant, and um, the Knights um, were like the first marriage that was ever performed. They're kind of this this um, family of first, the first marriage, and um, like the like the first sealing, the first sealing that was done by Joseph Smith. Also, like the first miracle that was ever performed was on Newell Knight. Um, it was like casting out the devil that was within him. And um, also Lydia Knight, she was the first person to experience like the gift of speaking in tongues. Um, and they just provided a lot of like physical things. They probably just with the job and a horse and buggy. And, um, you know, the paper that a lot of the, the scriptures were written on, the food, the money necessities. Um, they were the first people to speak to Joseph Smith after he was given the Book of Mormon because he was living at their house. And he was using all their stuff, like Joseph Smith rode on the horses to go date Emma and to go get the plates. And um, the whole family, like the entire Knight family, 
made up two thirds of the entire early church. So when the first, the church first started, it was like this big, this big family. And um, so they were kind of this like beloved and faithful family witnesses of Joseph Smith. And I find it fascinating that like in 1832, so the time of the restoration, there was another Revelation 12 sign in the sky. And then shortly following that, you have the church is blessed with an outpouring of the spirit, like on the day of Pentecost. So it sounds like they were given these wings like eagles and and Joseph Smith wrote, you know, much exhortation and instruction was given. The Holy Ghost was poured out upon us in a miraculous manner. So you have kind of, it sounds to me like, I don't know what the prophet's saying now, like miracles and, and we're being given wings. And this all has to do with this Revelation 12 imagery. And um, Noel Knight at the time was filled with unspeakable love and peace. And he saw a vision of the Savior and learned that he would someday be admitted in the presence of the Lord. So he's having this celestial kingdom experience. And um and then, you know, they're there in this meeting and it's Joseph Smith and just a few other people. And he says, you know, if someone will rise up and open your mouth, it shall be filled. And you'll know, speak in tongues. And it was, um, so they said, sister Lydia, rise up. And then um, the great glory of God was manifested to this weak but trusting girl. She was enveloped as with a flame and unable longer to retain her seat. She arose and her mouth was filled with the praise of God and his glory. The spirit of tongues was upon her. And she was clothed in a shining light so bright that all present saw it with great distinctness above the lights of the fire and the candles. So again, you have this like Revelation 12 imagery. And, um, you know, it's, you know, a lot of the history of the church actually comes um, from the night. So it's kind of cool because one of the like final things that Joseph Smith said about the night film, is he kind of said that they were the faithful few who stood by him. They were pure and holy faithful, just, and true, whose hearts fill not. And he said that, you know, to Joseph Knight, um, to me, there's this connection, like he calls him this faithful. It's about like his friend, like his beloved friend that never leaves him. And I, I find it interesting that it sounds a little bit like, if you think of how Joseph Smith's life parallels Christ, it almost sounds like Joseph Knight was kind of akin to John the Beloved in the sense that like he was just his beloved friend. So then again, you have kind of this connection to the Revelation 12 thing. Um, so, and he says for 15 years, for 15 years, he has been faithful and true. So in Revelation one, John refers to himself as I, John, the faithful witness and even handed an exemplary and virtuous and kind, never deviating to the right or the left. Behold, he's a righteous man. So now he's, now he's saying about Joseph Knight. He's a righteous man. May God almighty lengthen out the old man's days. And it shall be said of Joseph Knight by the sons and daughters of Zion. While there is one of them remaining that this was the faithful man in Israel. Therefore, his name shall never be forgotten. So it's interesting because this, this is like a similar promise. It actually sounds a lot like the Mary of Bethany promise for Eli Sandy that, you know, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, this also that she has done. So I just want to fulfill that prophecy that I'm a descendant of the Knight family. And I can testify that um, he was a faithful, a faithful man that supported Joseph Smith and the gospel and the restoration. I know that the blessings, everything that I'm saying, like that wouldn't have happened had he not made that sacrifice. So um, and, you're, and you're carrying on the tradition. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And I think in family, I have no no doubt that that um, those ancestors are, you know, helping and they're watching and and they're interested. And it doesn't even matter if you're like a descendant of these people or not, because they themselves were not. They're so amazing because they were they had no idea and they did the hard work of jumping into the gospel. So think of the mm -hmm. examples for all of us. And I think that um, like there's a reason that it says that my, you know, my children will testify of me because I think that their examples there, they represent like the church itself. My favorite book is like Stand By My Servant Joseph. This is all about the Knight family. And it's like the Knight family embodies just the general membership of the church. So you're just, you know, feel like I'm just a regular John the church doing my thing. That's kind of what the Knights were. Um, They're just always doing their best. Um, so anyway, so it's, just kind of interesting because we look at those things. It's, you know, this quote from Elder Knox, well, the same God that placed the star in a precise orbit millennia before it appeared over Bethlehem in celebration of the birth of the babe has given at least equal attention to placement of each of us in precise human orbits so that we may, if we will, illuminate the landscape of our individual lives so that our light may not only lead others, but warm them and well. So um, kind of tying all this together, it's like, like God's in control of all these things, the times and seasons, um, our special links of love, our family history, um, the work yesterday and today. And, um, you know, there's a few things that we can draw from that. That's to love God, to act in bold ways and worship love of God as Mary Bethany did and to love one another and to minister to the needs of others in higher, holier ways 
and support the marvelous work and wonder of the restoration as the night film we did. And so you look and like, I feel like this, that talk about the woman, it starts with Sister Eubanks and that, but it just continues on. At the very bottom, I go into just all the quotes that it talks about, because it says that when this, this, this flood is coming and it's this trouble, it's this problem for the entire world. As my daughter said, the kingdom of God is the entire world. Um, but the solution is that the woman is given two wings of a great eagle. So this sounds like this almost this Pentecostal, this pouring out like these, these miracles and these great, you know, President Nelson, the most miraculous things that are going to happen. And it's these spiritual like wings that are going to um, save us from these things. And anyways, and then I just kind of go in and, and you can see this whole rainbow of all the quotes that came out at that general conference. And then it really just continues in the rest of the general conferences to just hear all the wonderful things that um, they've said specifically about the women and their role. And um, yeah, and just, I guess I'll just quote whatever it says. Um, we know that the culminating act, oh, this is, see, this is, I guess this supports what you're saying, Jerry. said, we know that the culminating act of all creation was the creation of woman. We need your strength. I thank you, my dear sisters, and bless you to rise to your full stature to fulfill the measure of your creation as we walk arm in arm in the sacred work. Together, we will help prepare the world for the second coming of the Lord. Um, so it's kind of cool. And I, I noted on here, I said, I find it only fitting that as I just like, I'm finishing this post, I get the text from Jared telling me my, my interview time. I'm like, oh, exactly. And that, you know, we're scheduling exactly one month for my first ever post. And, um, and anyways, things are just like the next day, my friend that I've been wanting to forever, she takes out her endowment. And that was such like a special experience. And um, anyway, so there are just so many blessings that have flowed from that. And I kind of just end this with um, my favorite song. And a few of the words that come from that are, it says that God of creation there at the start, before the beginning of time, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. I can see your heart and everything you've made. Every burning star is signal fire of grace. I can see your heart eight billion different ways. Every precious one, a child you died to save. If you gave your life to love them, so will I. Like you would again, a hundred billion times. You're the one who never leaves the one behind. And that's the beauty of the gospel is that you can be a part of those miracles. And um, God, if you turn to God, God can make your life into something beautiful. and. Um, and he just, yeah, he just loves us so much. And I just, I guess I just want to, yeah, bear my testimony that Joseph Smith was like an amazing prophet and the work continues today as we read those stories. And um, for me, as I you know, look to the Knight family and, and the stories of Joseph Smith, that it, it comes alive and the Lord points out ways that the story's continuing, the story's not over, we're all part of that. And if we just have the faith and we want that and um, if we'll just like worship and we follow that example of Mary Bethany and not be afraid to just like love God without abandon and to do those hard things because God will tell you to do things that are hard. Um, so coming on to YouTube to talk about this was very hard for me. <laughs> 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 but I did it. And as I, every time I do get out of my comfort zone and just do those things he just pours out more blessings and it keeps me going until finally I think eventually I can finally just trust him and even if it seems like insanely hard I'll think well I already know that what's going to come from it you know if we're doing God's will it um will always be worth it yeah <clears throat> well thank you for coming on I guess I guess in summary you know er, just the <clears throat> to summarize this whole video I feel like um several different things share the book of Mormon Everyone share the Book of Mormon. And then let me know because by you reporting your numbers um, in me keeping track of it, I think it encourages other people to do the same because we're doing a big project together. Um, make sure that you find and use your talents because the Lord has a, a part for you to play in these winding up scenes. Um, you have talents, whether it's doing a blog like Jen or YouTube channel or some other thing, you know, just find whatever it is, follow promptings and <clears throat> you will do good in the world and you will help prepare the world for the second coming. And then women, especially um, there are some very specific things that 
that you're kind of in charge of right now that that is like your main role and the two main things are <laughs> creating a society creating a, a church a society to become like the city of enoch to receive the lord when he comes and to join with the city of enoch as well as um, attract people to the church specifically the good women of the world and uh, like sister eubanks said this is your time uh, referring to the women of the church. So your, your, your role right now is critical. I actually kind of want to do a video and I will do a video probably over the next couple of weeks. Cause I want to explore this idea further of like how this is kind of like developed over time. I'm going to see what I can yeah. come up with and, uh, mention this again, the revelation 12 sign on what, what the 23rd of September, uh, yes. in 2017. Um, yes. So and then just all the symbolism about the Revelation 12 sign. It's very interesting. So make sure to uh, go to her blog and bookmark it. And then hopefully, I, I'm hoping maybe <laughs> she'll do a YouTube channel because that'd be awesome <laughs> if she did. Um, maybe I will. It, I, it was a question on my mind this morning. I, I feel like maybe I'm resisting. <laughs> hey, I think you can do it. I, like I, I said, you're very I articulate. Like... And... <laughs> I think you have a lot of good stuff to share. So if you ever get to that point, we'll do another interview and then, um, and then I'll put that link. uh, I'll I'll feature you on the channel. I appreciate that. um, And yeah, my, for now, my blog, it's super simple. It's just firepoppy.org. And again, I, I thought there's no way that title is going to be free and available for me. And it was, so I just, you know, you follow the witnesses, you follow, you just take one step at a time. That's all it is, is just taking that next step. So, and uh, something else that I have my next post that's coming, I'm excited to write because um, Jared, your last book, the, the Ark Storms has me excited. You know, I thought I got that that miracle that told me the Ark needed to be my focus for the year. And now we're having like arcs that just blew me away. We're having Ark Storms <laughs> in the world. And I, I feel like the things on earth are indicative. They teach us of things in heaven, of spiritual things. And so we have these like these huge rains that are coming and there's actually this Jewish mystery and it's called the Marais and the Malkosh and it's called the former rains and the latter rains and the latter rains are much more tumultuous. So the former rains are like, like you think about in the church, we had the, we had the day of Pentecost. We had like the pouring out of the spirit. Um, but they say the Jewish uh, uh, thing is they talk about the Malkosh and it's the latter rains. And these are the destructive rains. It's so much rain that it's like destroying things. Um, but both are, like this pouring out of the spirit upon the people of God. And you have President Nelson talking about miracles. And then I have my experiences and I feel like, and I have this really interesting quote. So I actually um, had a general authority tell me about this like really cool thing that Elder Iring said, this prophecy about that, about like revelation pouring out upon the heads of families. And then we have the, anyway, so there's, there's so much more. (laughs) So so I'll put Check her it. I'll put her blog in the description below so it'll be easy to find. Otherwise, just remember Fire Poppy. So really cool. Really like the aesthetic. I li- really like the subject matter of your blog. You have a sweet spirit. And um, and then it, if you're new to my channel, if this is your first time watching, make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Uh, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Um, and then also make sure to share it. Uh, with anyone that would be interested in a blog like this. And I'll talk to you guys later.